Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 187 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Trevor and David. How's it going, guys? Hey, good, good morning. Has 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 everything? Uh, we we got Trevor back. I mean, just Trevor back. Got David back. I clearly uh, can't speak me? today. I, I'm like losing <laughs> are you, my mind. Are you okay, Tom? <laughs> no, I'm tired. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fair. We got Damon back. <laughs> I, I'm back. I, are, are you going to leave in the uh, unedited opening to this then? I, no. I feel like you should. Yeah. No. No, I, <laughs> no. Well, I guess for anyone listening, if 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 Tom cuts that out, then you know, let us know in the comments. I'll just cut <laughs> this out too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. I'm going to mention it like, I'm gonna mention it like thirty I'm times in the episode. I'll make <laughs> you, your life. I'll make your life tough. <laughs> sprinkle it throughout the entire episode. No, yeah. that, oh, that's that's terrible. <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? And then Tom has to redo the entire opening by himself as three different people. <laughs> oh man, I, I did. I did have to re-record. What did I have to re-record one time? I think it was an ending. I, I've done this before, where I've had to redo certain things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like we've we've had like stuff not upload properly and whatnot, yeah right yeah yeah like where like i think it, we had a problem where like the uh the host uh just like when we were recording it just cut out like right as i was giving the final line of the episode and it's just like oh man now i gotta go back and re-record that and you know it never like sounds the same you know what i mean like yeah. <laughs> it's like when you, it's sometimes you're watching certain tv shows and you can like tell that they like dub something in afterwards because like the whole like volume is different and the person's the cadence of the person's voice is different you can always tell i feel like so anyway <laughs> but we have damon back damon's back from vacation back yes yeah. Yeah. yeah so we obviously the one thing we have on our on our, the the first half of the show is just your trip report so it's a lot of here to hear about your like. trip it, is i mean you're excited to talk about all this stuff did you did you take notes I, this I, time i mean i did but i was like way more excited like during the week <laughs> than I am now. You know what I mean? It seems so yeah, yeah. far. It seems so long ago at this point. Yeah, you know I what I mean. Yeah, but now it, it was. It was. It was a good trip. I mean, it was definitely different than what I was used to trip wise. Um, so what we decided to do was we were supposed to go down on Saturday, and we had park tickets on Saturday. But it's still like a nine hour drive, which turns into ten, right? Because you got to eat and get gas. And I just, I just didn't think we could do it. So the, the first thing that we decided to do was, all right, well, let's stop somewhere. And we, we had all sorts of ideas. I mean, obviously, I love the Gaylord Palm. I would have stayed there, but it was super duper expensive. And it was also, I don't even think they had room, to be honest with you, on a Friday night. So we decided to stay at the Doubletree, the Disney, what are they, Disney Preferred, whatever. What do they call those Good things? Good neighbor. Good neighbor, yeah. yeah. It was a nice hotel. I was pleasantly surprised and there was a fair amount of Disney stuff in it. So one of the first things that we kind of got to take pictures of was there was, what was it like a teacup or something, but they had Disney 50th banners. Um, yes, it was a teacup. So they had a Disney, you know, Walt Disney world 50th and then a 50th teacup that you could kind of stand behind and take pictures, which I thought was nice, especially at a, non Disney hotel. I thought that was pretty good to be honest with you. That's kind of so, cool. That they had that there. Uh, yeah. Cause I was, I saw that. I think you posted that picture on Facebook and I was like, Oh, I yeah. wonder where he took that. Cause I had not seen that before anywhere in the park. So I was, I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe, I thought maybe it was Disney Springs. No, 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 no. So that was, that was something that we did. And then from there, what we did is the next day we just got up, dropped off all of our stuff at old key West and then went to the park from there. So we were in room 1112, I think 1112. So it's right next to the hospitality center and it was a two bedroom and it was, the room was gorgeous. It was bigger than my first house for sure. It was huge, huge. And they say that those are the biggest ones on property. And it, it was, it was definitely true. It was really, really big. The location was not terrible because you're, you're the kind of the, you're the last one off, but the first one on, I think. Is that what it is? 
in the butt sloop. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. I mean, it could be. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if the top. So we didn't, we, yeah, we didn't, it was definitely the last one, but we didn't have any trouble getting on because you know what I mean? Like in the morning it, it was fine. I, again, I think um, Becky mentioned you can walk or somebody, maybe Gina, I don't know. One of the mentioned you can walk from, I think it must have been Gina, that you can walk from the first stop to the hospitality center that they're actually pretty close. We didn't do that, but the last night we, there was a bus issue from Disney Springs, which I'll get into. And we would have, except that the lady went to the hospitality center first. So whatever, that, that's, that was the only really downside of the trip. And it came pretty much the night before we left. So it wasn't even like a big deal. It didn't ruin the trip being annoying. So that was the first night. So we go to Epcot the first day and we just eat <laughs> pretty much. We just, you just ate all day. <laughs> just, we just ate all yeah. day. So what I found out was, is that my kids were pretty pissed about the fact that we weren't getting real food. They did not love this eat around the world. Really? Nonsense. No, not at all. Wow. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> they did not like it one bit. So, Let's see. We ate. I have a list of the, that food and wine app is really good, by the way. Yeah, it's it's not. It's like the best app. I swear. I like, it really <laughs> is. It was yeah. it was way better than I originally thought. So I would say that the Impossible Burger Slider was one of my favorite things. To be honest with you, oh, wow. twofold um, because of the wasabi cream and the spicy coleslaw. But the thing is, I don't eat beef in general. So having something that kind of tasted like beef, even though I don't eat beef, was kind of refreshing to be honest with you so i really liked that yeah that was really good you know it's like the apple strudel totally not worth it um teriyaki chicken bun i'm kind of bowed out and bunned out because i can get them here now so there's really no big deal about it you know to be honest with you the impossible meatball was fine too and here's the thing that i thought was the best by far not even close was the chocolate bread pudding in Mexico was oh, ridiculous. Okay. Really was good. ridiculous. Yep, absolutely. So that was kind of our first day of eating. Um, we also did the sticky wings with peanut sauce and grape gel, and that was in the brew wing. That was okay, but the crispy Brussels sprouts were way better than I expected them to be as well. Nice. So that was the first day. I'm trying to think about what we went on ride-wise. Oh, we went on Ratatouille. So we did not get any sort of, you know, Genie Plus, Lightning, anything. We just went there and did Ratatouille that day. Um, and it was okay. But see, I, I have to go with what Jeff's saying. Like, that ride and Mickey and Minnie's is literally the same ride to me. So That's fair. <laughs> it was it was okay to, like, it was like we got there, we went on it, we're like, oh, this is kind of cool. But then it was eclipsed, obviously, by other things. So we also did not get into Guardians of the Galaxy that day for the virtual queue. The virtual queue was packed, obviously, because it was like, boom, gone. I was surprised. So we just individual lightning lightning lane that um, the first day. And it was it was okay. The, the thing with the individual lightning lanes that you have to really remember is you literally see no queue. You see nothing. You just You're, cut through everything. Yeah. You cut through everything. And that's definitely a build up ride, I feel like. Sure. Because we wrote it a second time too, and, and it was a different experience. So anyway, we went on that. It was fine. I, I am sticking by what I said in the beginning is that Time Traveler is a better ride. I, I, I just I think it is. Like I didn't think this was anything special. My kids were like, Yeah, it was good. They liked it. It didn't end up being I don't think it ended up being anyone's favorite ride, to be honest with you, but it was good, but it wasn't, I don't know. I just thought it was good. It, it wasn't great. You weren't like blown away by it, but you, you enjoyed it. It just wasn't your favorite thing that you, you. Yeah. Like I didn't, to me, it wasn't a thrill, you know, thrill and excitement wise. It wasn't that much different than rock and roller coaster. I mean, you're literally just, T turning to see a screen that's the difference I, I don't know i thought it was good because i love rock and roller coaster it was good i didn't think it was out of control good it was just it was it was it was good right like th they definitely do a good job at telling a story but the ride itself was just fine for me so the next and our goal for disney was guardians of the galaxy 
Rise, Ratatouille, Mickey and Minis, right? That's the only things that we really needed to go on. We, we knew that was our plan. We weren't going crazy for anything besides just getting on those four rides. So, like, again, there was no um, fireworks or anything like that. Like, I didn't have any need to go on the fireworks. I, I thought to myself, I said, you know, because it was some. Th- there was something about like, oh, we could have stayed for the fireworks. We were there late enough that like the fireworks were coming. And then I was like, going to the fireworks is like, it feels like um, snake bite. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I just don't want to do it. Right. Like, it's not like it's terrible, but like, I just don't want to do it. So we did not do the fireworks. So that was our first night. And our goal was to flip between Epcot Hollywood Studios, Epcot Hollywood Studios. That was kind of what we had reserved for those days. Um, So there was, again, my notes are kind of a little bit all over the place because we just, you know, again, I'm trying to take notes, but I'm just trying to kind of be in the moment as well. So I have notes where I don't think that I have them necessarily in order. So I'll I'll be a little bit all over the place here because I don't remember if we did something else that night. I kind of feel like maybe we went to another park, but maybe we didn't. I I don't, I don't really remember. The other thing I will say is that what we did in terms of mask wise was we decided that we were going to do our masks on any ride line as well as also through like really heavy trafficked areas. Like if we felt uncomfortable, like we, you know, we wore them in, in Disney cause that was, you know, magic kingdom cause it was crazy, but we did them just on ride lines in general and the buses, any transportation. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and that felt comfortable for us in general. Like, again, if there's not a ton of people at Epcot, it felt, you know, in terms of where you're walking, you know, I also kind of it, adhered to my own internal rules of like where I felt comfortable and where I didn't. So that was kind of what we did ourselves. Um, let's see. We went to Club Cool. Oh, you did? We did twice. And it was, I mean, <laughs> the cucumber sprite, probably my favorite, to be honest with you. I like the cucumber sprite. Yeah. 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 yeah I think we all cool. agreed on that. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. cucumber sprite, yeah. sprite was good. Although, but my favorite was Beach Club, but, you know, <laughs> that was like the creamsicle kind of one, Damon. Yeah. I mean, it was just okay. The, the thing is, it was so hot that I feel like the cucumber sprite was just so refreshing. I, it probably held a little bit more sway because of the weather because it was hot, man. Yeah. Again, right. I get it. It's August, right? Like, it's not like I'm complaining about it because I knew it would be hot. But it was hot. Um, so let's see. I, I want to say that's kind of what we did that night. I think the boys may have done their own thing at night that night, I kind of feel like. So what I would say is that I really enjoyed – see, so my oldest is going to college next week. And my other – you know, my middle one is going to be a junior in high school. And what I felt was really nice about Disney, and it didn't even dawn on me till we kind of got there, is that – they were in like they could do their own thing, but it was still in a bubble. But what was nice about it was is Disney kind of forces you to have to make decisions and do things, right? Sure. So, you know, they decided that they were going to go somewhere. Okay, well, they have to go there. They have to, you know, get in the park, you know, with their, you know, phone or whatever card. They have to do all of that, um, you know, and I felt like – That was really good for them, you know, to kind of get this feeling of like, hey, you got stuff to do. You know, the second night that they decided to go out on their own, it was kind of interesting. They thought they were going to go to Hollywood Studios, but then the Skyliner was down and they didn't want to go. Like It turned into a whole big thing, but it was good for them to like have to kind of coordinate what to do and how to get there and how to get back and, you know, all of that. I like that um for for me right because i felt like it gave them a little bit to do and have to accomplish with 
without me having to feel uncomfortable of where they were, right? I wasn't worried about that. It was, it was like making them like have survival skills while also being in a safe bubble of where they can't mm-hmm. screw up too much, right? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Like, it's they, they learned like a logistical lesson, but they but they were in it. They could do it in a place that was safe and, and not yep. gonna, yeah. I really, I really did enjoy that. So the other, yeah. So that was kind of like the first night, and then the, the next day we were going to um hollywood studios we decided let's see so hold on that must have been the first day we yeah so that was the first day we went to hollywood studios and we decided to do genie plus that day and that allowed us to ride mickey and minis as well as a bunch of other things i enjoyed that way more than ratatouille i agree yeah um i think that the, the other thing too is is ratatouille gave me this this weird you know when you're in the the vents kind of like didn't make me sick but made me feel like ugh, right obvious. like <laughs> for, for a brief moment it really did and, and mickey had none of that i just like the way that mickey did the combination of animatronics with the screens and things like that i yeah, really it's like 3d that, projection right? kind of in a weird way yeah it's like mm-hmm. and also the pre-show at mickey and minis is very cool too so. Yeah, it, it made me wonder about why is there just not pre-shows everywhere? <laughs> well, they're starting to. I mean, because yeah. Ever Guardians pre- one pre-show is very cool, too, and kind of in a similar way. It's cool. But you know what I, I wish they did is I wish there was seating for all the pre-shows. <laughs> it's just where you can see. But that wastes time, though. Then you're wasting time. You know, why? People getting up and si- sitting down and standing up. That would That would kill your efficiency, I feel like. I mean, sitting down and standing up. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I don't disagree with you. I would love to be able to take a seat. Like but- when we were online for Tower of Terror, I was like, "Why is there just not like bench seating all the way through this whole entire queue? That would be the best thing." Like they're yeah, just. I, get that. I mean, we we sat wherever we could on the ledges, but I feel like why not just build that in? Just build it in. Yeah, like yeah. why do I ever have to stand at Disney? Like, let me be like Wally and just literally be, you know, in a chair all the time. Get yourself that a scooter. That's you just get yourself a scooter and then you're good. <laughs> I mean, I guess. So yeah, so the, the scooters were interesting because now they're in pretty much every ride line, which is fine, right? Yeah. Um but yeah. He likes Mickey and Minis though, right? So you love saying, Mickey and Minis. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun. Really that ride good. is super fun. So yeah. I would say that was probably my favorite ride out of those four. Oh wow, really? Yeah, because, I mean, again, Guardians to me was just okay. And, I mean, what was the last one? Rise? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we did Rise not that day. So we – that day we kind of just looked at Rise and kept going, oh, 110, 120. Oh, I just don't know if I want to do it. Right? Like that was kind of how I felt about it. So yeah. we didn't do it that day. We just did a whole bunch of stuff that we've done before at – um you know hollywood studios because we had genie plus and genie plus worked out well thought it was well worth it in terms of doing rides and things you didn't like have that. any issues or anything like that i mean you thought it was, no I, I, I think it's pretty easy to use it was just like the old fast you know i think it is i think the again because we used it for mickey and minis i think the only problem with it is is that you really just again it have to understand how it works so my parents are going in two weeks or whatever so we decided that we had to kind of school them on it so we had to learn a little bit about it just i I think that the lightning lane and individual lightning lane like my wife said it's just why name them the same thing that's just stupid right like that's where it gets confusing yeah and again like confusing to the point where okay you get it after the fact but it's like while you're there i could see being a little frustrated if you don't put in a little bit of pre-work to understand everything like hey i don't need lightning lane to do individual lightning lane or why are they all called lightning lane? Like I get because you're walking kind of through the same area, but same it's line. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. frustrating. So yeah, but we had no problems with it. Like I so said, we did individual lightning lane for Guardians of the Galaxy, and then we ended up doing you know lightning lane for Mickey's. So we did that. Um, where did we eat? I don't think we ate anywhere awesome. Like we did just quick serve sort of stuff. Oh, I think we I think we went to Animal Kingdom that day. We decided to go to Animal Kingdom. I didn't afternoon. even realize you went to Animal Kingdom. <laughs> you didn't yeah. even said anything about that. Yeah. No, so we went to Animal Kingdom. So we rode Dinosaur, we rode Everest, and then we ate at Yak and Yeti. Yeah. So we, we did that just to kind of be over at Animal Kingdom because we're like, hey, we're going to be back at Hollywood Studios again. Why not just go to Animal Kingdom? And I had no problem with the after two. It was fine. You know what I mean? Like switching parks only after two, 
it was That's not a problem at all. Having to wait until two. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, no, that wasn't a problem at all. So, yeah, we went over there that day as well. Um, we also did, gosh, I want to say we did Figment and stuff. Yeah, we did Figment Ride. Food and wine was good. I'm just kind of looking at my notes. Oh, the only thing that I didn't realize there was an eagle on the top of Everest. Why have I never seen this eagle or this bird? Really? Cause yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's not there, I think. <laughs> I um, feel like this was the first time I ever saw it. Like, wow. for real. And I think I've ridden that ride, like, I would say, at least 50 times. Yeah, I was I was really surprised about that. Yeah, um, I think it's only there sometimes. I, I think it's, it's, it's I've broken sometimes, or... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the animatronic doesn't always work, but I, I'm just surprised you've never caught it up until now. Never. Huh. Or yeah, it just was. It was surprising to me. I was like, "Wait, is that bird new? Like, it can't be. Like, it doesn't look new. Like, it just. It was. That was. That was interesting. Um. So yeah. So we did Animal Kingdom, and then we knew we were going back to Epcot the next day. Yep. So I don't think we did anything else. Yeah, I don't think we did anything else. So we came back. I think the boys might have. My boys may have gone and done something at that night too or they might have went to the gym i don't know there's the gym was involved but the gym was kind of packed over at old key west they said so they kind of waited it out for a little bit my kids also did the pool there which they enjoyed uh we did we just walked over to the pool but i was the other thing i was surprised about is that i had i known we would have brought tennis rackets to play because the courts there looked really nice at old key west the tennis courts but I just oh. didn't even think. Yeah, I just didn't even think because, yeah, because I'm like, oh, I'm at Disney. When am I going to have time? But we did this trip so different. Like, we were not getting up until in the morning. We would wake up at 7 o'clock to either do our virtual queue or individual lightning lane, right? And then we would hang out and the kids would get up around 10-ish or so. And for us, it wasn't so bad because it's not like we were doing the, you know, lightning lane or whatever and then leaving. We were just doing it and then like, all right, it's time to get up. So it wasn't so bad. We went then back to Epcot the next day. I think that's when I met Gina and Vicky, I think, in the morning. And I met Ashley in the afternoon at that concert, which was... Wait, what concert? What concert? Was it Joey Fatone that was there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I met her there. It was loud. She was super nice. I got to meet her kid, and, and it was it was fun. But I, again, like I had no interest in the concert, but I ate a lot more food that day even though the kids were mad. So let's see. So we did the Why were they mad about just eating at booths? Like they just wanted to sit down somewhere and eat Oh, all they were once. pissed. That's what they like, kept saying too. Like, can't we just sit down? Like, I just want to sit down and eat. They were so <laughs> mad. <laughs> okay. Like I mean, they really were mad. I would think kids would be into the just eating around. Oh, that they were funny. They That's were funny. pissed. They like, not even like mad. They were pissed. I feel like, like <laughs> there was a lot of discussion about that. So we did the fry flight, which was an absolute waste. Like, I don't know why I even wanted to do that. Like that was just crazy. The only thing good was the toasted marshmallow cream and candy uh, pecans fry. But it was just worthless. It was salty. It was why am I wasting my, you know, money and no, I heard that combat. one was good. I heard that one was but good. They're French fries at the end. Yeah, they're of just day. French fries. Yeah, right. <laughs> we did the sticky wings again, soy glaze, sticky ribs. Uh, the grilled pork shoulder lettuce wrap was also really good. Now, now this day, what happened? This is <laughs> so I'm I'm like I'm kind of walking through Epcot, and everyone's kind of just doing their own thing ish. Like we're you know we're walking together, but we're not necessarily together. So I decide that I'm going to stop and get food right i'm gonna what was i getting i was getting oh i was getting those tacos at mexico the tacos al pastor or whatever they are so going to get those and then i'm like i'm definitely getting this bread pudding again because it was so good as the only thing we ate twice because it was that good and i go to get it all and i'm in line i'm chit chatting with people i was actually i talked to a lot of people just in general just everyone was very chit chatty at disney this year i mean i don't know why but it just seemed more chit chatty than normal especially in the lines for food kind of talking to somebody I get all this food and I turn around and everyone's gone. Like my family just, I just, they just left you. <laughs> like- so I have all these plates and I'm kind of just like, what am I doing? So I'm like, I'm annoyed at this point. So I call my wife. I'm like, what's going on? Like, where is everyone? Uh, well, she ended up going to another booth to get something fine. And the kids go on the, um, the Mexico ride. And I'm like, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <What>? So like <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of twisted at this point. So now I'm calling them like, where are you guys? Well, we're going on the ride. Like, well, did anyone think I want to go on the ride? I guess no one thought I want to go on the ride. And I'm just, I have plates of food at this point. So that was a little bit annoying, but I'm just like, okay, I guess that's just the way kids are these days. So we got the tacos, which are really good. Got, uh, what else did we do that go around? The panna cotta we got actually the day before, which I thought was good. My wife was just like, it was okay. The Dan Dan noodles, they were just okay. Like nothing special, especially for the price, because those are kind of expensive. I thought that they were just all right. And then I think... I want to say that was kind of it that day because everyone was so mad about like eating around the world that we ended up having to get real food, like real ish food at (laughs) somewhere. I don't even remember where it was, but we, we got food somewhere and we rode Soren. I think we did not get on the land, which was super disappointing. We rode Nemo. Wait, we didn't, didn't do the land? Oh, man, you got to do living uh, with the land, man. Come on. <laughs> so it rained so hard. Oh, geez. At almost every day. It was kind of like oh. you, you get you, – not that it's a problem, but you just get kind of worn out. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I know exactly like, what you mean, yeah. Yeah. You get like waterlogged kind of somehow. Yep. Like, <laughs> yeah. So we ended up leaving there and – the boys definitely went somewhere that day. Did they go to Animal Kingdom? They they went somewhere after two, and we're just kind of like, we haven't been to Magic Kingdom. And I was like, I feel like we kind of have to go to Magic Kingdom. So me, my wife, and my daughter get on the ferry, go over to Magic Kingdom. We're like, what are we doing? It's mobbed here. This is disastrous. Like, it's so mobbed. Like, it was so bad that I had to wear my mask walking through Main Street. Right. It was it was really busy. Like it was, oh, it was so. But the busy. other parks weren't though. Just that park. Just that park was oh. overwhelming. The other parks were busy, but not overwhelming. This was overwhelming. Gotcha. So I was like, all right, we got to get a picture of the stupid castle. Got to get a picture of us in front of the stupid castle because otherwise, you know, whatever. And then we're like, we got to ride a ride. So I think Gina has suggested people mover, but. Because I don't like people telling me what to do. I decided that we were going to ride something else. And we ended up riding uh, Carousel of Progress. Yeah. Which I don't remember the last. I forgot that ride existed. I don't think I've ridden it in 15 years. I thought it was the stupidest thing. But it was cool because the last scene, right? You're kind of like, oh, waiting for these last scene for these people to be updated, right? I felt like yeah. there was an update there. So we they updated that. their clothes. We talked about it a couple weeks. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, that's what I remembered. I was like, all right. So we rode that. And then we're like, all right, this place is terrible. And we just left. And we came back. So we go back on the ferry. The captain is like, uh, didn't I just see you? And I was like, yeah. Why are you going back? And I was like, because we were literally just going there to say we went to Magic Kingdom. And she kind of looked at me weird. And I was like, yep, exactly. And that was about it. See, so I, I thought you were going to want to do People Mover to take a look at Tron. Because I know how excited you are for Tron. And that's a, I am, but I don't like view. people telling me what to do. So, <laughs> so if Gina hadn't have told you that, you probably would have just done it. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. All right. Fair that's just the way I roll. So... That was, like I said, not being at Magic Kingdom was fine. And I would say that I'm not looking forward to Tron being there because it's just so packed. Like, it really was just so packed. So I think, what did we end up doing? We, this was still an Epcot day. So we, we went to the, we went, did we go back to Epcot? My wife wanted Indian food and then... As we were going to get Indian food. So we went to the we went to the lounge. We tried to go to the lounge and they were full. So they're like, we'll put you on the wait list. And my wife was like, all right, well, let's go get food. And the boys were somewhere else. I don't remember where they were. They were meeting us back there. And we go to get food. But I'm like, I'm telling you, it's not going to be 45 minutes. Like they're going to text us in 10 minutes because you have like 10 minutes to like log in once they text, you know, once they text you. So we get over there. I'm starting to eat some more food. We can't get to India. They text us. We have to run back. Not run back, but get back. My boys are there. So we all go to the lounge. And there's four of us, even though the reservation was for five. So they bring us upstairs. I'm not really paying attention. So they put us at a table for four. And then my wife comes. And it's a disaster because, like, they slot you in, I guess. Yeah. Right? But, like, 
Dude, it didn't seem like this big of a deal because we checked in originally with five just because they sat us with four. And I, again, my fault, I forgot to say something at that point because I didn't think it would be a big deal. It was a big deal. So my wife takes a chair from one of the other things. They come over, like, can't take the chairs. Like, well, we had five. Like, what, you know, what's going on? And this lady was pretty much like, nothing. You know, like, you came in with four, even though your reservation was five, like, kick rocks. Then another lady came over and she's like, look, I can get a chair for your daughter. It's just going to be one of the kids' chairs. Okay, fine, whatever. But it, it was kind of annoying because there was chairs everywhere. And at that point, it wasn't even full up. Like, you know, accommodate. What I'm saying is there was multiple seats open. And I get you have another group of five coming. But if you have four other tables open, why can't you just give us one of those chairs and then make that a four or why can't you accommodate when we checked in with five? Yes, totally my fault when I got up there. I should have said, yeah, hey, there's only four of us now, yeah. you know, but my wife is on her way. But when I was downstairs, I said that. When I was downstairs, I was like, hey, we're four of us are here now. My wife's coming. She'll be right behind us. And the lady downstairs was like, yep, no problem. I'll take care of her. So I think that's what made me feel like I didn't need to do anything. And obviously I did. So that was a little annoying. But again, not a world stopper. We drank enough soda for, you know, whatever. And then, you know, obviously the chips and cookies are out now. You know, <laughs> oh, honor they're system. Out? They're, yeah, they're honor system sitting out. Please that's take that. one only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, say, yeah, that's oh, like boy. Halloween, though. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. Halloween when you leave a, a bucket of candy out on your front porch. It's going to be gone after three trick-or-treaters. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one kid loads up their bag and walks away. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So... We also then did Guardians again, so we were able to get the one o'clock. We still couldn't get the morning one, which was still crazy to me, but we got the afternoon one, and we wrote it, and we went through the virtual queue, and the queue is really cool. I would say what was most interesting is that when you're in the line, and you're kind of through the queue, but not to the ride yet, there's this hallway, and this hallway is like kind of making you feel like you're going onto the ship. It's super tall. It's, you know, just a hallway. And I can tell you that for me, when I was in this hallway, it was one of those rare times while at Disney, I was like, I really feel like I'm getting on a ship and I'm in this hallway. And it didn't seem like it was much because, it, again, it was just a hallway. But because it was so tall and so grandiose and just the way that the hallway was done, it was really cool. I, I said, I was like, hmm, this makes me feel like I'm getting on a ship to go somewhere. It made me feel like I was in a movie getting on a ship. But the hallway, not the ride, not the queue. Just <laughs> it did, this it didn't feel like that way the first time around, right? Like you're Because well, we didn't do that. You, you didn't go it, through there, yeah. We yeah. didn't go through there, yeah. So, I mean, we wrote it again, got a different song again. It was, it was okay. Like, I mean, it was good. It was good. What were your songs? Do you remember? I know you said they weren't your jam, but... <laughs> um, I don't know... The, the disco one, I don't remember what the first one was, but <laughs> disco. <one>. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're good. September by Earth, Wind, and Fire, I think. It's, yeah, maybe something. Like oh that. man, September's so great for that, right? I feel like. I actually, I don't even know if it, it was. It isn't Disco Inferno in there or something? I don't even remember. Is it? I, I don't remember the playlist I, off the top. I, of I've heard September's in there. I the, yeah. that was the only one that came to mind for me. Okay, um, but it was it was like I said, it was good. It it again, it didn't. The ride is there's just there's screens like. Yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, going through the war poles is kind of neat, but it's the the turning of the cars. I feel like everyone was so souped about that. And people were arguing with me about that. Oh, the, the cars turn though. The cars turn, dude. So what? <laughs> like it didn't do anything. Like it turned me yeah. towards the screen. Yep, that would be like me being at the movie theater, sitting sideways and turning to the screen. Like yeah, and duh. Like it just. The ride is good, but it's not at the same level of rock and roller coaster in terms of thrills. And the screens are cool. The story's good. But the ride itself is just not at that same level, personally. But that's just me, man. So um, Disco Inferno is on the list, by the way. Yeah, so, so we definitely had that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, okay, so let me just see. So in between somewhere, I just have a lot of notes for after. So let me just finish for, I guess, the rest of the next day. We end up going, like I said, back to Hollywood Studios. And my wife worked. I don't know. I had this great idea where she was like, hey, you know, I don't want to waste all my days, you know, going to Disney, this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, oh, I'll just work a half a day. So we ended up individual lightning laning rise at that point, right? Yeah. And then my wife decided just to work because she was, as we talked about this before, she could care less about that ride. So I said, okay, we'll just go by ourselves. And it was good. 
but I only have to do it once. And that's what my son said too. He goes, Oh, it's good. But like, why do I have to do that again ever? And I was like, yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Like, why do I have to have to do that again? Like, it's a ride that is just like, feels like I can just do it once and be done forever. See, I, I felt like I need to go on it a million times because I felt like there's just so many details that, and you're moving so fast that you just kind of miss a lot, you know, but I don't know. So the room with the stormtroopers was way overhyped. It looked so plasticky dumb. Like it really did. Like it was not awe inspiring. It looked like a shrunk down model. Like it was not good. And I don't know if it was because there really isn't that much movement there. I don't know if they just looked super plasticky, but that's really what it felt like. They look super plasticky. I don't, I don't know. Like I get they're supposed to be shiny stormtroopers, like, but. It just you, seemed you, plasticky. I don't. I mean, if they moved more, would you? Have, I mean, would you have felt differently? I don't know because when, so when stormtroopers are in Hollywood studios, kind of moving around, like not on the ride, but just walking around. Yeah, yeah. It, they just didn't feel realistic. Like I don't know. I felt like that was like the whole payoff of the ride should have been that, and it just was like, nah, whatever. Um, the ATAT's room was better. You know, you know what I mean. But the only thing is, the thing that I didn't like in that room was like behind the glass. Like I listen, why can't I get animatronics behind the glass of the vehicle? Like, why did that have to be some terrible sort of projection? Well, the screen you're talking about, in yeah, the windshield, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, give me animatronics back there, man. Like, go the extra mile. I feel like probably because they break too much and they would be a pain in the butt. To okay, make them animatronics <laughs> that don't move. I'd be just even better sit, with that. Just, just dummies, just sitting there. Just dummies sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Just like 3D ish, because that definitely took me out of that scene immediately. Because sure. I'm like, this is just a screen. This again, it was okay, but I don't need to go again. That was the big thing. That's what I felt like. It was good, but I don't need to go again. Now, my son, like I said, he, one of my kids loved that as their best ride, but they also said, like, why would I need to go on again again? Um, what else did we do that day? We didn't do a lot because we had Moonlight Magic. I kind of forgot about Moonlight Magic. Oh, I saw Charles for like five minutes. I don't know, dude. Like this dude was coming on vacation and we were going to meet him up. I literally saw him for five minutes the whole time. That was about it. We met at Scoops, five minutes. What's up, Charles? Talked for a few minutes, and then that was that. Um, we went to... You met a fair amount of magic. listeners this time around. Four. Yeah, four? Yeah, it was a four? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's more than we, you've met before there, I feel like, right? But No. No, no I've met more before, Have I you? feel like. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Moonlight Magic. So, this is what I would say. It was good. Like, it was better than I thought, but in a different way. So you can get there early and we got there around six something. So originally what our plan was, was to go to Disney Springs, eat, and then go to Moonlight Magic, right? That was the plan. But what happened was bus shows up directly to take us to Typhoon Lagoon from Oakey West. And we're kind of like, uh, let's just get on that thing. <laughs> well, because usually you usually don't get a direct bus, so I guess correct. Probably because Moonlight Magic was happening, they maybe absolutely they direct buses. Yeah, and that was probably one of the worst decisions we made of the trip. Oh, so no. <laughs> we get there, and, and the reason is because we want to go back to Disney Springs too. Because I want to, we were looking for a shirt because dude, fiftieth shirts are like if you want a specific size, they were hard to get. Right. So we figured we'd go to Springs and try to get them there. We missed out because we didn't want to go into Magic Kingdom to buy a shirt because we're kind of like, oh, just get me out of here. But we should have done that. But anyway, we so we said, okay, let's just go to the, you know, Moonlight Magic. Then we'll go stop at Disney Springs on the way home to the room. And then we'll, you know, eat there and get there. Anyway, it didn't work that way. So we get to Moonlight Magic. We get there early. But that's fine because you could show up at six, I think. You get special bracelets on. And we just went to get food before you know everything kind of shut down for Moonlight Magic. So we did that, ate some, you know, iffy food. And some iffy food? What do you mean iffy food? <laughs> well, because it's like quick serve like hot yeah, dogs, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. so, but the best Space. part about it was so you have this little weird window where people are leaving. Moonlight magic is not like happening yet. So 
people that didn't show up early for Moonlight Magic aren't there, but people are leaving because they're shutting down because of Moonlight Magic. And between like 6.30 and 7.30, there was nobody online for anything. So just empty. We're literally just walking on stuff like, what is it, um, Cowabunga, right? We're literally just walking on, going on it, walking back on, going on it, walking back on. We're, we're just walking on everything. Every ride is just walk on for the next hour, pretty much. Nice. So now around 7.30, people start showing up for Moonlight Magic. And then, you know, the ride lines were nothing crazy because we did uh, the, the – was that Mayday Falls or whatever? We did that. I mean, maybe we waited 15 minutes, which is not terrible. And then we did Crusher Gusher, which uh, 15 minutes, again, not terrible. But things were not no longer walk-on. We got special, you know – bracelets when we got in so then we just the the food lines that was the other thing so the food lines kick off at eight but we had already ridden so much stuff that we were just like oh okay let's you know get our stale popcorn and mickey bars and they were like (laughs) take take as many as you want it wasn't like one per person it was like dude just go crazy so okay we ate a bunch of mickey bars and the fruit bars right they had strawberry you know frozen fruit right or whatever they are whichever ones they specifically had and then stale popcorn and that was fine right so we ate all that and then we're like oh water rides i don't know what we want to do so we did a few more things and then i had forgotten how good the wave pool there is now i've been to some other wave pools i don't think that they changed anything about the wave pool for moonlight magic but I guess I hadn't been there in so long. It kind of felt like they did, if that makes sense. Like, it felt like they ramped it up. I know they didn't, but it felt like they did, right? Because I was like, those waves are kind of big out there. You know, they've they've moved in from at least from when I – or maybe they have. I felt like they've moved in the buoy line from where it was previously. And again, I'm talking about years and years ago. I doubt they did, but I just hadn't been in so long that it felt like that. So we isn't, like we were, isn't the wave pool yeah. at Typhoon Lagoon the largest in the country? I think it's I think it's the biggest in the United States. It might be, North America, I, yeah. But I also feel like because it's Disney, it's not as big as some of the other ones in terms of wave like size. Waves? Yeah, well, but they I don't claim know. On their website six foot swells is what they claim on the website. I, I'm going to tell you, like it was all of that. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. If, you know, I'll tell you yeah. the truth. It felt like it was more. It yeah. really felt wow. like it was more, which I doubt it was. I just the feeling I had. So we were actually getting ready to leave and then we're like, oh, let's just stop at the wave pool for a minute. And I ended up staying in there for like another 35 minutes. It was it was fun. <laughs> so the, the, there's a few things as I get into like some things that just happened. But one of the things was, is I, I was out of shape for Disney. OK, you know, after I, I had surgery and stuff like I hadn't done anything or exercise like Disney put a whipping on me, just not as bad as Lumberjack, but almost as bad. But one of the things was so I'm swimming out. To talk to like so my boys, you know, obviously both swimmers, they're out there in the wave pool right where the the line is for the buoy. And I was like, Yeah, I gotta swim out there. So I swim out there the first time. I was kinda like, All right, cool, cool, cool. No big deal. I'm talking to them for a little bit, treading water, come in. And then like I was like, Yeah, we're getting ready to leave. So I gotta swim out there to tell them like, you know, hey, we're gonna leave in a few minutes, like, so let's finish up. And I was like, Man, I'm kinda tired. Like Disney made me more tired. It it Re- renewed my thought of really having to get in shape because that wave pool was no joke, right? <laughs> it was no joke, but we had really fun there. And then we left there. And what happened was we were like, well, we're going to go to Disney Springs. And the boys went back to the hotel room. So it was me, my wife, my daughter, we get to Disney Springs. We, you know, manage our way through getting some shirts and all that. And then we're getting ready to leave. And it's getting late. We're like, oh, let's not take the ferry. Let's take the bus. We get to the bus for Old Key West. And here's where it just is annoying. And I'm listen, I'm sure everyone goes through this, but everyone else's bus comes twice. Now we're not the first people online, but now we're we're getting up to an hour at this point of no buses. Okay. Getting close to eleven, getting kind of tired, getting kind of annoyed. So I was like, all right, this is ridiculous. We're waiting here. It's like again, it's kicking up on like 45 minutes to an hour. Again, I think time feels longer. It was 100 percent 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Was it over an hour yet? Ah, debatable. Could have been, right? Because you don't really keep track of when you start standing in line. But we see an old Key West bus, and you know, coming around that loop for Disney Springs and just disappears and never shows up. So now like 
10 minutes after that, now I'm like, all right, this is ridiculous. Like it's, it's almost 11. Like I just want to go back. So I, I go to the, I ask somebody online and they're like, you know, one of the people walking by a Disney cast member, they like, Hey, that's nothing to do with buses. Go talk to those people. I go over and I'm like, Hey, you know, what, what's going on with this old Key West bus? And the guy kind of blows me off a little bit, right? Like, you know, Hey, you know, yeah, you know, we'll look into that for you. And then I start walking away and I was like, wow, wait, wait, hold on a second. What do you mean you're going to look into that for me? Like, what are you going to do? Like, how do you not know where this bus is? Like, I, I don't understand, right? Like everyone else has had two buses. It's almost been an hour. Like, what does that mean? <clears throat> he, he wasn't super duper helpful. Um, but now at this point, you know, I say to him, I say like, well, who's like in charge here that has like some sort of information about this bus system? Because again, we're up on an hour and no bus to be seen. We saw this magic bus that disappeared. So the manager comes over talking to her for a few minutes and she's like, hold on, let me find out. And she, she's like, well, the per, the bus that was coming over, the ladies in the bathroom. Okay. That's cool. Well, well, for, <laughs> really? well, first, well, yeah. Well, first she says she doesn't know. And then I question again, you're the manager here, right? Like, isn't this your job to know kind of what's going on with the, the buses? buses are, yeah. Right. Like I, there's five of them there at this point, by the way, five people doing mm, not too much. So she calls in, finds out the ladies in the bathroom. Okay, whatever. But like, you know, why not someone come and tell us that? And, and this is what yeah. kind of got me in about the buses. If you're ha- supposed to have a bus every 20 minutes and a bus doesn't show up for 40 minutes, why doesn't someone come over and just tell you what's going on? Like there was people there. There was people that five cast members with, you know, their vests on. Why are they at least not coming to tell you? Because if someone had come over and said, listen, everybody, sorry, the bus is going to be a little late. Like, that's fine. But why don't they do that when they're just standing around? That's the part that was frustrating. Now, you know, she's walking me back into line. You know, I'm like, listen, like, I'm not trying to be rude, but like, you know, it's almost 11 o'clock now. Like, We've been here for an hour. You know, she would have, she goes, when are you guys leaving? I said, tomorrow morning. And she was like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like, I, I think she would have tried to do something for me, which was totally not the point. The point you just wanted to bus home. You just wanted to bus, just wanted to bus home. That's what I told her. My whole thing with that is, though, look, I'm at the resort. I know when the bus is coming, right? Why can't you have that there? That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it may take some effort. And, and listen, even if you can't do that, why can't you just come over and tell the line what's going on? If a bus doesn't show up now, I think that there was some combination of this bathroom break, which whatever, man, the the person didn't know what they were doing. They must have been new. So when we go back to Old Key West, they drop us off in reverse order, which was fine because then we were the first stop. But it was just it was just it was just frustrating experience when the buses don't have to be that frustrating because the frustrating part wasn't the length of wait. It was the fact that we don't know what's going on because we probably could have looked up, seen a long wait, gone over to the ferry and been done. Yeah. And There's a lack of information. Lack of information. Yeah. But that was, that was kind of our trips and all the interesting things. Uh, let's see. So every single day, someone commented on the shirt I was wearing at the parks, not cast members, just random people. Which shirt were you wearing though? Yeah. Which, which yeah. So first day I was wearing an amphibious shirt. And three people came up and were like, oh, I love that show. Oh, I can't, where'd you, you know, I can't believe you have that shirt. The first person that came over vaguely looked a little bit like Matt Braley. Now, he wasn't there, but I was like, what if that's Matt Braley? So then we had to like go around and find the student. And we we're like, no, that's not Matt Braley. But I was like, could you imagine? That would have been awesome. I wore that shirt. I wore the gummy berry juice shirt, which people commented on. Gravity Falls shirt, which people commented on. And then the last shirt. Oh, gosh, I knew I was going to forget this. I don't remember what the last shirt was, but it was another cool shirt and people commented on it. No, no Haunted River Country shirt? No, I had it with me, but I, I didn't rock it. I didn't rock it. Um, uh, must have been, I may, one day I did have a Welcome Home podcast shirt. That was day, that must have been the fourth shirt and someone said something about the podcast. Oh, not really? like, oh. not that they knew the podcast, like, oh, you know, you have a podcast? Like, what's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what's no. that? Yeah. Um, I've gotten that too, where it's like, oh, what's that podcast about? You know? Yes. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, it was so hot and humid that, like, I'm going to tell people that complain about people without deodorant, 
like deodorant couldn't even have kept up for that, those days. It was so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like I put on deodorant in the morning and I showered and put on deodorant. But when you have rain and hot together, I don't know. It was a little tough. It was a little tough. Um, I lost my charger in the beginning. I brought my charger, my portable charger with me, lost it. I don't even know on the bus or something like that, which was super annoying. The only good thing was I didn't lose my phone. I just lost the charger, but I'm going to tell you it made my trip miserable. You are attached to your phone. Everyone that says that it is 100% true. You need your phone for everything. And it was annoying not having a charger with me. I can only imagine the people that had old phones. I have a new, well, newish phone. I have a 12, right? So the battery's pretty good, but I can only imagine what it would have been like with an older phone without a charger. And then learning how to use your key that's in your wallet was harder than I thought. Like you have to, you have to double click it. Like you have to like double click your power button to get the little thing that comes up underneath that says you can now scan. Like are you, if, are you talking if, about using using oh okay you're talking about using your your instead of using a magic band using your phone is that what you're talking yeah, about yeah 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 magic and, and mobile the, or whatever it's called yeah and the tough part with that is that no one like there's no instructions for that the only reason we found out is some guy told us like one of the cast members like hey it works better if you you know double click on your power button and then you'll get this little thing under that you can scan now like yeah that would be nice if like that was explained a little bit better and then the other thing is too is that you have to tell people how you're charging. Like if you want to charge to the room with your phone, you have to tell them that because oh, yeah, it's different. Otherwise they'll do Apple pay or, or G pay or whatever. I, I don't know, but you have to tell them that that was its whole thing. Because when we first went to Epcot, we were trying to use our phone to like charge and the, whoever we had as the first person didn't understand that and it wasn't working. So I just started using my credit card. But then the problem with just using your credit card is, is that after the fifth place, you know, the credit card company's like, whoa, hold on a second. Is this you? And then you have to, so I had to then switch to a second credit card. Then after I did that, I got, you know, my email and was like, yes, this is me making this purchase. So that was a little frustrating, not finding out like, Hey, as long as you just tell them, you know, I'm going to use my phone to pay, charge it to the room. Okay. So that was, that was nothing, something else to kind of be aware of. Um, and, and the charging in the lounge is broken by the way. Like if you don't have, like if you just have a cable, but not like a plug-in charger, there was at least three places that I tried and it didn't work, which was also super duper annoying. Oh really? Yeah. I, yeah. I've, ne- I've never actually tried to use the chargers up there. So, yep. So that was kind of annoying. I bought two shirts. There's a super cool figment food and wine shirt, which was really cool. I got that. And then I just felt like I had to get a 50th because, I mean, I got, you, you know, 300 t-shirts. Why? How could I not? My wife's like, oh, it's got to go next to your 40th. I said, yeah, that makes sense. These neck fans, everyone had them. Yeah, everyone has those neck fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next time we need to make sure that we we do neck fans. That's like, I felt like that would have been a definite win for um, the trip. Should- don't you do like the cooling towels though, or is that no, that does that? No, no. yes, yeah, so that, that seems like too much work. I don't do this either. <laughs> yeah. So the funniest thing we heard was in what was that? Must have been in was it? It was Epcot. Yep. A lady in front of us was arguing with her kid that they she had two kids. One of them, I mean, maybe seven. She was like, "You've already spent five hundred dollars on toys." I will take all your toys, start a bonfire, and throw them all in oh if God. you don't stop. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, I we mean, were just like, like, that's pretty, you know. That's, was it that's effective? Pretty graphic. <laughs> I, I mean, it seemed to be effective, yeah. um, but that was a little much, but that was funny, like, because it wasn't our kids, right? And it, that was funny. The housekeeping people at Oki West were so nice. They knew my son was going to college and um, accommodated him for stuff he may have needed. Let's put it that way without asking, which was, I thought was super nice of them. That's um, cool. Yeah. Super duper cool. Overall, the thing that I felt that was terrible was I had no cash. And the, like, what do you do for the housekeeping people if you have no cash? Yeah, that's that's always a challenge, right? Yeah. So I have to remember next time just to bring cash. So I talked to them and was like, hey, listen, I have no cash. Um, and, you know, they were just like, well, if you leave stuff like drinks and stuff, like, all right, cool. Like, you know, so but I felt bad about that. The other thing we had happen was is that we were my 
daughter was had switched earrings because she just got her ears pierced. And the new thing now is you leave them in for eight weeks. You can only switch every eight weeks up until a year. Anyway, that's just what they told her. She went to a piercing place, not, you know, like uh, in the mall sort of place. She went to a tattoo piercing place and they did a really good job, but they told her that. So she switched out earrings. One of them fell down the drain in the shower. Okay. And not, yeah. no, not, not super expensive earrings, but not cheap earrings either. So what was smart was she turned off the shower immediately, right? And we know not to, you know, turn it off immediately. So I tried to go in and look into the shower myself, but we had no screwdriver. I was only using one of those screwdrivers that, you know, you have on your keychain sort of thing. And that was not cutting it. So my wife called over and sent two people over. Um, and, you know, the fellow's like, listen, you know, hopefully it's caught up in the hair in the drain, right? That's actually going to be the best case scenario. <laughs> right because that's what you kind of yeah yeah want, that's, right? that's okay. the only thing to catch it right yeah <laughs> yep. so he takes it off pulls the hair out and this dude literally went through this disgustingness outside with his fingers right which listen these guys were so nice there's two of them Lu- luis and fernando so nice so you know he's like hey you know we're sorry like you know we it's not in here and I, listen no problem like i really appreciate the effort like so nice of you guys to come out and to try. And you know, we were talking for a while. He lives close. He's been working at Oakey West for like, did he say 14 years maybe? But he said that he does not like working anywhere else. Like when they ask him to go to other resorts, like he's like, uh, no, Oakey West. Like that, I just like working there. Nice. So I thought that was pretty cool. So then they're like, well, hold on a second. And they go out and they get a shop vac. Shop vac at once, pull all the water out, nothing. And I was like, again, super thankful. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. know, to, Oh, let me try again. Goes in there <laughs> and gets it and gets it out of there nice. the, the second time. It was, but then again, I was like, Hey, this man, I feel like, thank you so much. I feel so terrible. Like we immediately went to the front desk and told them we also wrote one of the, um, you know, things you can do online, you know, uh, the compliments, the cast, compliments, yeah. Compliments, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cast member compliments, did all that. But I felt bad. I had no cash for this dude because I would have given him money. But I thought that was like above and beyond. So nice. Everyone at the resorts, Old Key West was super nice. And they all had this feeling of they loved Old Key West. Like yeah. they were not about other resorts. They were all about Old Key West, which I found rather interesting. Super nice, though. Couldn't believe it. Like that, we really enjoyed. The cast members at the rest of the park, no problems with anybody, right? Like, I mean, everyone was fine. It was, you know, nothing special, nothing not special. Except for those bus people at Disney Springs. <laughs> oh, those bus people at <laughs> Disney Springs. Don't count them as people in the park. <laughs> yeah, they don't bus. count. They're Disney yeah. Springs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think outside of that, that was that was pretty much the, the trip. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, it sounds like you had a good trip. Like, it sounds like you had it a good was, trip. it was yeah. better than I thought. I'll, I'll be honest. It, it was better than I thought. I would say that mask wise, it is hot, but masks are doable for us, right? They were definitely doable, but it was, it was hot and it rained a lot, but it was still super fun. It, you know, being at Disney is definitely, you know, with the family together is its own experience. We did not do, any photo pass, which was disappointing, but I realized that it wouldn't have been worth it. And we did have some people take pictures for us. We not only were people like taking pictures, but cast members would also take pictures as well. But I, I miss that, but it just definitely was not going to be worth it. You get what I'm saying? Like it yeah. just wasn't mm-hmm. going to be worth it, but I definitely missed that. So our pictures were not as nice, but we still got some good ones. And, you know, it was it was a fun family trip, but I'm also like, I don't know if we'll go back until next summer. Like, I don't have this drive to go back to the parks. We did what we wanted to do. And it was fun going to the parks and having four rides Just like, rather yeah. than going to the parks and having one thing to do or something new. It was fun to have four things to do. A little bit of pressure still, you know, felt with this virtual queue. Like, I don't love that feeling. I, you know, it was... The little pressure with that, but the individual lightning lane kind of takes away that pressure somewhat because you can buy. And, you know, again, if you're willing to get up at seven, you're probably going to be able to at least buy an individual lightning lane. I feel like. Yeah. So that that's why we did that first. And then we did the virtual queue, but it was, yeah, it was definitely an enjoyable trip. I mean, D- Disney's Disney, you know, it was, uh, it was fun. So. That's good. That's good. Yeah. 
I'm glad you got to do everything you wanted to do. And, you know, I, it sounds like, uh, you know, you had a lot of good interactions. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, everyone was super nice. Again, people there in the parks were really nice. I think the only thing that we kind of got a side eye glance for was, I don't remember what ride we were on, but we were on a ride and it was kind of like the flow. It was like, you know, when you have like one of those rooms that has the hallway after it, which then turns into a single line. I don't remember okay. even where it was, but like it was a room to a like free like for all haunted mansion kind of thing where it's it, yeah, we weren't funnels everybody in like that, but we weren't at haunted mansion. I don't remember yeah, what yeah, ride but, it was, but like, yeah, someone like kind of gave us like the evil eye, like, dude, I wasn't paying attention. I was literally following the guy in front of me. Right. So like, I didn't even look up, like, is it possible that as I was following the guy in front of me, when the lines merged that I wasn't paying attention, yeah, totally possible. And again, I would have turned around and had they said anything, I, go ahead. Like, I don't care because I was in front and my family was behind and they were in the middle and my family came literally through two people to get to me. But like, I wasn't doing it purposefully. I was just kind of like following the guy in front of me. So I would have moved back had my family not moved up and I wouldn't have cared, but it seems that they were bent about that but oh, geez. whatever um just you know just the eyeballs there was nothing said but it was just like oh, okay uh but yeah overall i thought everyone was good I, I was expecting because of what people have said in the past i was expecting a little bit more of a experience you know what i mean like with people but it wasn't like that you mean you were expecting uh, people to be ruder not people? Nice, yeah, I yes. say, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I did. I expected that, but it wasn't the case. It was just, you know, Disney. Yeah. Okay. We so, had crepes too. Oh, you did. Uh, you did we, the crepe place. <laughs> did the crepe place? Yeah. I mean, as we were sitting under under it while it was raining, but yes, we did the crepe place. <laughs> I hope you didn't wait an hour like I did <laughs> for, for crepes. Yeah. Oh no, it was like five minutes. If that Yeah, okay, yeah. Well that's yeah. that's probably probably a more than one cash. Well the outside crepe place, not the inside crepe place. Yeah, yeah, that's I yeah, I waited forever at that crepe window because you, you don't remember that story? maybe you weren't here. I don't know, but it was so bad. Uh, could have been. Yeah. They, they were good crepes though. I I, I yes. thought they were good. Yeah. They definitely yeah. are. So uh, so your 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 ranking of the uh of the, the, the four rides that you wanted to go on, where where, where do you put them? Oh. Um I like making a mini is probably the top, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um I think I'm going to have to go with Guardians of the Galaxy after that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Um, sure. Because they all like it's like Mickey and Minnie's and then everybody else. Right. So uh, Guardians and then I guess Rise and then Ratatouille. OK. The only the, the coolest thing about Rise was the lightsaber in the ceiling effect. Like that was cool. Yeah. Like, that, is that, was, cool. yeah. that was cool. I mean, it was OK. And it's funny because like. They're, the Imperial officers are like kind of trying to be rude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some but are better than others. <laughs> but it's weird because it's like this. Are you in character rude or are you yeah. just rude? Like, I, like that's <laughs> what I had a tough time with. I, you know what my problem was is that there were some people that were trying to do a British accent, like doing a fake British accent. And I was like, it's pretty obvious that you're doing a bad accent. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, just you could just be mean to me without the accent like i don't need the, the the british accent yeah so yeah but i mean i i think that ride is cool just because of all the different parts of it it's such like a it's a long experience you know it's like a mm -hmm. it's a whole thing so you know between yeah. the the, the pre-show and the on the ship and i i don't want to give away too much because trevor still hasn't done it yet and i know he's avoiding oh you stuff. haven't okay yeah i mean it's definitely worth doing yeah it's yeah. definitely worth doing but i mean it was nice to save that extra couple bucks with my wife not going. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, cool. Anything else? Anything else you got? No, man, I think that's it. I'm just looking through this list. Of There's not much else to else. talk about. They're saving yeah. all the announcements for... No, no, no. I'm looking at this list of what people were asking. Oh, what people are asking you? Okay. Yeah, I mean, dude, I think Remy and... I mean, I think Rise, Remy, and Mickey and Minis are kind of the same thing. When it comes to the ride, yeah, I mean the ride system, yeah, but I mean like they're not no, I mean, but it's the same thing, like. <laughs> but but the mm. but the ride system and the ride. I mean, what what is it like? You're looking at screens. You're in a cart. Like it just seems. Yeah, but like that's the like same saying thing. every roller coaster is the same because you go up a lift hill and then go down a big hill, and sometimes you go I mean, in a loop, and sometimes you go in a bank. And but do, but do you, do you think rise is different just because you have that small drop? 
Like I know, I mean, there's it, rides is way different because it's. I mean, you, you're talking about a, a several the, different rides in one. I mean, it's the the walking part of Rise is different, but the ride itself is the same to me. It's the same, and I feel like they got lazy doing that. What, like, what do you mean? Like they got lazy? It's just a trackless ride system. It's yeah, that's what it, I'm saying. But why do the newest three rides all have to be a trackless ride system? Because like, why can they been something different? I don't know. I mean, that's that's uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can be creative with it. You can, I you know. know. I feel like it's the same thing. Like I would have liked if Rise was different, or even even though I loved Mickey and Minnie's, like why couldn't that have been a, a little mini coaster instead of a rideless system? Get what I'm but, saying? Like, but no, because why do you want to keep doing coasters? Like, uh, do well, the because coasters are different thing. than trackless systems. Trackless systems are the same thing. So are coasters the same thing? No, coasters can have loops. They can have dips. They can have drops. They can have sideways. They yeah, can have but all I mean, sorts of stuff. That's but the trackless you can do all that stuff. I mean, you can't do like you know. I'm saying you could do everything is different. It's but you're right. I mean, it's you're the going same sort of room movement. To room I feel with like. di- yeah, I get that. Yeah. But- I just don't agree that they're the same thing. I mean, I the same ride system, sure, but I mean, all of them are different in the way they execute it. I mean, like Ratatouille, Mickey and, Mickey and Minnie's and Ratatouille are the exact same thing without the animatronics. I mean, I just feel like they're different than the way they present themselves. I mean, Ratatouille, you're in like this small little vehicle, you're kind of by yourself in a way, you know. Whereas, like, so, yeah. Sorry, I I I've, I've been taking my headphones off because you guys keep talking about. Rides and stuff. stuff. So yeah. I've I've caught half of this conversation. All right, we'll stick but, to Mickey Minnie uh, and Remy. Okay, so <laughs> so he sells a bit of Mickey Minnie's either. So sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think correct me if I'm wrong, Damon, but I think what you're getting at is that the trackless ride system is entirely a two dimensional movement, right? Yeah. Which means you can't do as much I, with it as you could with a coaster or some well, other type I mean, of system. I mean, R- Rise is a little different, but we can't talk about that. But yeah, okay, yeah. But the, I, I feel that's what you're getting at. It. Like when you say that they're all the same is that they're all just moving on a 2D plane. Sure. Which doesn't. Well, and it's, it's also the know. same compartmentalized sort of ride, right? Like See, scenes are. Yeah, I, I know that you, from you, Ratatouille. You know, the, yeah. The scenes are from scene to scene. Yeah. Yeah. What if like it was a trackless system, but there wasn't a room to room scene to scene and it was a different experience. Like it's just there. The innovation for me right is there in one but like they even have alien saucers is the same system ish right like i mean the what i don't know man saucers no those are yeah that's a different thing that's Ah, that feels the same though man alien swirling saucers that's like a that's a whip ride it's a whip ride yeah it is but i feel like i'm in the same sort of feel of movement for the vehicles oh yeah 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 Yeah. it's yeah it's it's just yeah you're right it's again it's it's two-dimensional i just feel like i needed one of them well, I also feel though like well, it's interesting though, Damon, because like they the trackless ride systems have existed at like you know the newest ones have existed mm-hmm. at all the other parks for a long time, and without them, I just being haven't in, seen them yet. The American parks, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's been, I mean, it's been one of those things that's been kind of sorely lacking here. Was that I, I agree? But yeah, I'll take one of them. I get it. I just yeah, think, I, I just I, again, it was really interesting to be there, and I liked some of rides, right? Like I liked some of these rides. But there was nothing that I was like, oh, like, that's what I want. And I just don't know what that is. Maybe I don't know what that is. I still think it's holograms. But like, I, <laughs> I don't know what that is. But one of them would have been fine. I just feel like there's not a big enough push for innovation for me. Just for me. I mean, I, I, I just I just don't know how. I mean, I don't know. I found I, Rise, was, I found Rise of the Resistance to be extraordinarily innovative in like a lot of ways. But I, you know, but th- you know what? I also th- here's the other thing. I don't want to see that many people. Then do that, but don't let me see as many people. Like, what do you mean? I think like, that's one of the things at Disney that like Navi River is so. We, we went on that as well during our day that we had Genie Plus. Right? I love that ride, but man, would that ride be a hundred times better if I didn't see people? Like so you're make saying, it, don't see other vehicles. More, yes, make it more intimate. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And absolutely. you have three hour long lines. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Like, well, but, cool with that. but but the argument against that is that you know with the trackless ride systems, you could do something like that because you can force, like you you can have people loading at the same rate, but then having the ride split off in such a way to accommodate what you're talking about, Damon. Yeah. I just, I need that more personal feel, especially on rise. Again, we won't get into rise too much because Trevor's here, but I wish rise was more personal. It would have been better. 
I see. I feel like I, you know, and the other thing about Rise I like though too is because again, if you part of the the nice thing about the trackless system is it is a different ride when you go on at different times, right? So like if you know, I mean, they, if I'm seeing the same scenes, it's not a different ride, man. No, 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 but I mean, you're taking different paths and you're going different places. Like, and I I don't want to ruin anything for anybody yeah. that hasn't been yeah. on it, but I mean, like you know, there's there's one path where you go up and there's one part path where you don't. I mean, like there's different there's different levels of things, you know, and I, I don't know. I just, I just think it's a way to be, to, to have a lot of people go moving through and also not know where the ride just, pass is going to go. And I didn't you know. need three of them. That's how way I feel. Well, well, I didn't need three of them. Here's so, the question though, Damon, like if this yeah. were just a regular trip though, where you've gone on all these already, is it just because these were the four rides that you needed to ride and they all happen? Like, if they were just in the mix, you know what I mean? Like if they were just, it's because you did a bunch, three of them all at once, you know, instead of just being. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe, I mean, I don't want to discount that factor. I just don't think that like, what is the innovation at Guardians of the Galaxy? Like somebody tell me what is this innovation that everyone's talking about? The, The turning of the coaster? Like, dude, that's not innovation. Other rides do that, man. Like, what is it? Well, you know what? I, I, I don't I think Disney likes to sell everything as innovative, but I think we're in a phase right now where they're they're in between. Yeah. I can see <laughs> and, that. And I'm and I'm gonna leave it at at you know, I'm just gonna say they're in between as the statement because I feel like they're in a place right now where yeah, they're not being super innovative and like like you said, Tom, that, you know, they're bringing a lot of stuff from other parks into the U S parks, which means, you know, they're, they're using the trackless ride system. And so you're getting a lot of filler rides, but I, I don't mean that in a negative way, because I, I know what you're saying, Damon, that, you know, they all feel like the same ride and, and, and to what Tom's saying, I think that's a symptom of, yeah, you kind of hit them all at once, which, you know, I think could have been, I, I would feel the same way about it as well that, you know, while you're just, they're just recycling everything, but I feel multiples of those rides are necessary because the same way that the Omni mover systems, you know, way, years ago were like, they were, they're people eaters. Like these, mm. tr- these rides are going to be, be the same that, thing, that could which, be. which leads into, you know, having, having space in a trip where you have some options and it's not everybody. Whoa climbing onto the latest hottest ride you could right? ride like, any of the well you could ride remy or mickey and feel like yeah i only got to one and that's okay i, I don't know yeah. for me i'm just looking for the next thing and and i the again level thing yeah i just don't know what it is it, i think it could have been rise but it just wasn't rise for me and we also got to see a ton of people from the hotel like full geared out doing stuff oh in from the star galaxy's Cruiser? edge oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like geared out. I was like, "Yo, like that's how <laughs> everyone on the ship should be." If, if if you could guarantee me everybody on the ship, be does it have to be like everybody that, though? Like if it's the majority, it has to be every single person. Oh my god! If you could guarantee me that, I'd be in. This dude was dressed as some knockoff Han Solo, and he looked awesome with his <laughs> wife as some. I'm assuming it was his wife as some, you know, sort of you know knockoff Princess Leia, and they had their two kids that were geared down in Jedi robes. I was like, "Yo, sign me up for this family." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know I know you're try like I know you're complimenting, but you make it sound like they were like wish.com console. <laughs> oh, no, they definitely yeah. listen, their their gear was on point, but right. like it but wasn't it wasn't it was Han, it was a Han Solo like character. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but you still was, respected his game though. You still Oh, I one hundred percent respected his game. I felt like this is this is it. I, I also felt like it made me a little like Oh, I wish I had friends like that to go to Disney with. Like, that's kind of what I felt like, dude. So this is, this is the thing. Like I, you know, our friends won't go in the summer that we normally go to Disney with. They just won't go in the summer. So that's, that's, you know, they're off our list, (laughs) you know, our, our other set of friends that just have a hard time coordinating with them at Disney. They're like at Disney all the time. So it's just, uh, I I can't coordinate with them. I don't know. I feel like I need, because we're going to go back in July. I need like a, a Disney travel family, but like, there's got to be like the stipulation of they need to like have kids similar ish age or something like to make it like fun. Like it would have been fun with another family there. Cause we do miss that. Cause we normally would do that. I would say that Disney is definitely better like that. Um, and then we definitely miss that, especially cause people don't like to go in the summer, but that was something I would have liked a little bit more as well. Well, you couldn't even do that with like me because like, you know, my trip is going to be too different. Young. 
Yeah, when my, your kid's yeah. too young. Yeah, my trip's going to be totally different when we go this time. It's going to be all absolutely. catered around her and not the things that your kids would want to do. You know? No, absolutely. Same, not. Yeah, same. Like my son's a little too young for for to hang out with your boys as well. Like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I need I need us to find that group of people that is. Uh, I need to put out like a. There needs to be like a Tinder family vacation sort of thing. Like that's what I need. I need like a Tinder family, like to, to, to come and like, all right, let's match up kids' ages. Okay, like you like to do these <laughs> rides. Like, all right, this is how you guys eat and do your thing. Okay, cool. I like that. Like that works. Like that's what I feel like I need. I mean, it was fun. And like I said, it's enjoyable spending time with the family, but I feel like I, I needed like just another group of people to be like, yo, look at those people over there. Like, cause you know, for me, like it was cool seeing these, these people from the Star Cruiser, but I don't think anyone in my family was. They're like, yeah, and. And I was like, no, no, look at them. They're, they're cool. Like, like, you're not you going to get uh, good. You need someone. So I, I'm going to do a shout out to Nathan in the group. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw his pictures from his Star Cruiser trip. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that one with That's him standing yeah. on the, on like with the lightsaber and everything. Like you, you need, you need friends like that to go on. The absolutely. Star Absolutely. Because <laughs> you're not going to get your wife and kids to, to do the cosplay with you, right? Like, that's not happening. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It would be a tough call, I feel like. It would be a tough call. Uh, I saw you mention something about how you thought the Moana thing looked really cool at Epcot, too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I forgot about that. So we got to see that when we were on the monorail. Yeah, you get a good look from the monorail, mm-hmm. yeah. It looked really neat. I didn't realize that it was smack dab in the middle of Epcot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like it's right there, and it's big. Yeah, it's, it's big. It's, it's big. where the old innovations building was. Yeah, and it's it's pretty big. I was surprised at how big it was. To be honest with you, I, yeah. I think so. They have the wire frame for the waterfall is up. Yeah, I, they're I wish starting was, to do like the rock work and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I wish it was bigger. To be honest with you, because bigger is always better, right? But <laughs> it's it's it looks cool. But I just I wish it was a little bit bigger. But it's the area is large, which I think will be nice. It's gonna be a we- it's gonna be weird, though, because it's gonna be like smack dab in the middle and like this lush sort of it, it will be interesting. It'll it will be interesting. be interesting to see how they I, blend all that in. So yeah, I, I think with you know, the the art we've seen for for future world or mm-hmm. the sorry, whatever the community is called now, I can't even remember. The, mm-hmm. Uh, World. But, uh, yeah, it's I, yeah, but I, I feel nature, like is that one? That, that's the one. Yeah, I, I think I think it's going to like the problem is is right now it's it is very disjointed because of the construction, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I think it'll make sense. Yeah, World Nature is is the, that yeah. one over to, and then in the middle is World Celebration. So, um, Damon, oh, what was I going to ask you? Oh God, um, did you get to see the lights on the on Spaceship Earth or no? Yeah. Yeah, they were pretty cool. You liked it, right? <laughs> yeah, they were pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's I was just... surprised at how cool they were and what all the different things they do with them. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, it's kind of, it's such a simple thing. But then when you see it, you're like, wow, that's cool. What the, what they can do, like how they can draw lines with it. And yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was neater than I thought. Absolutely. Yeah. That I didn't think the, what's it called? Lit up um, plasticky things were anything cool, but the, the um, yeah. pillars. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. What about plasticky things? The, the they're, dude, they're, they're, they're definitely well, the acrylic, acrylic fountain. The acrylic fountain. Yeah, they, there's no way they're glass. So they always said they were acrylic, though. They never said they were glass. No, but I'm just saying is that they weren't. I just was referring to them. That's all. Like I was oh, just okay. referencing them. I'm just saying that they were just okay. Um, but it was funny. We heard people complaining about not having the what's it called things there anymore. Um, oh, the tombstones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, I yeah. love the tombstones, man. Those are cool. Now they're on the outside. Now they're when you're walking in, you can go and look at them. So no, I didn't even see them, to be honest yeah, with yeah, you. The, but yeah, it requires you actually like going out of your you way have to make to an see effort. them now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to make an effort. So um, did you happen Wait. to go into Connections or into uh, the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Either one of those cool. places? Yeah. I, cool, we yeah. liked them. I, I know some people don't like them. I think they look cool, but... Uh, the other thing was, so yes, we saw the Soren single rider line, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's on our list oh, to talk about. That. I saw that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's fine. I mean, it definitely makes boarding longer, though. So I don't know how much time is saved because, like, they're filling in with these singles kind of is a pain, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So, but I mean, it was fine. I'm just looking at the rest of the stuff because there's no way I'm staying for the rest of this. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, now we're going to have to go fast. You talked for so long. We haven't even done an ad yet. We got to do an ad. Yeah. Well, hold on. I'm going to talk real quick and then you can do the ad. So the earnings call highlights, like, dude, business is business. They charge what they charge. Like, I'm good with that. Yeah. I don't. I didn't have any problems with the individual lightning lane. And then the Wreck-It Ralph attraction. Gosh, that's what we need. Please announce something good there. Are you Wait. you mean are you meaning that sarcastically or seriously? No, no. Okay. I just okay. I just hope that it follows the same sort of 
Stitcher's Great Escape. Listen, I know we're not going to get something scary, but at least make yeah. it cool like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So All right. that was it, though. All right. Anything else? For that? That's it for me. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and do our ad then. We'll do our ad, and then uh, you know, Damon. I, I don't know if you're going to stick around and chat on these things, or. But... I, I think Damon's talked long enough. Okay. Well, I mean, I put this power line <laughs> thing in here. I feel like for Damon, but you know. <laughs> All right. So this week we have a DVC Rental Store. DVC Rental Store, a world of DVC company, offers magical vacations at incredible value. Save up to sixty percent off retail rates at premium Disney resorts. DVC Rental Store now includes deposits as low as 25% at time of booking and a built-in cancellation policy for every reservation. As always, DVC Rental Store pays out the most for members looking to rent their points. Want to learn more? Go to dvcrentalstore.com or call 1-855-DVC-RENT. That's 382-7368. And when you talk to them, let them know that Welcome Home sent you. All right. All right. So I have, say, we're, I have to say Damon's trip report was more positive than I thought it was going to be. I thought he was going to hate everything. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm happy that that he had fun. I, I knew I knew he would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I but I also do like I see the point about the the Omnimover or not Omnimover, sorry, the the uh the trackless rides that it, it's fair that, you know, it's a lot of the same and, and I can see where, you know, if if that was the focus of your trip that, you know, yeah you come out of it going, well, that was all just the same ride. So but if, be, if it's be, if it's in the mix and it's just, you know, the, yeah, the rides are going on. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, that's kind of my feel with it. Is it, it like the same way as like, you know, you get on, the, you know, there's the, uh, the aerial, the under the sea ride yeah. and there's haunted mansion and all that. It's, it's like, yeah, they're all the same ride, but yeah, you, you kind of, you mix them in with other stuff. And that's what yeah. I think this is, is, you know, it's the next phase of that, which I think is great, but yeah, we need we need you know Tron or something, whatever's it's, coming next. There's but. only so many ways to convey people, right? Like there's you know, yes. there's only so many ways to move people from one thing to another. For me, like they're not the same ride because they're different themes and they use the cars differently, and there's different things that happen. Like that's for me why you know you can call them the mm-hmm. same ride because of the same ride system, sure. But like I don't agree with the idea that they're just the same ride. They're completely different. They're completely different themes. There's, there's completely different things that happen. You I, know, like I agree with you there. Um, but if if the entire park was just trackless rides, oh no, I don't. I would no, be like, no, no, mm, no, yeah. no. But like, I've never like been on like you know gone on three Omni Mover rides in a day and it'd be like, geez, you know, Disney with these Omni Movers. Like, right. I don't care because the Haunted Mansion and Little Mermaid are not the same thing. Like they're different, you know. Yeah, they're they're different rides. They're you know they're the same kind of concept, but I mean, that's you know again, there's only so many kinds of rides, right? Like so, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. to me why I like Rise of the Resistance so much because it 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 it's kind of like three separate rides in one, and that's kind of why I think it's it's innovative and and different. And I mean, you'll see when you go on it, but it's yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll understand in November. <laughs> yeah, and like that's I I guess I don't understand the the idea that that's not a you know what they did there was not incredibly difficult and incredibly you know different and innovative you know like I I don't know I just I, I it it's, just confuses me. <laughs> you, the the thing is is that we're all looking for different things. Well, right. I also think it, people are just impossible to to impress anymore. Right? Like no, it, well yeah, no that that, that that's not true. <laughs> it, you know, pe- people get impressed all the time by things. It's just like, like the, this podcast is a perfect example of that is that you, me and Damon all have different expectations and, sure. you know, my, mine align to yours at some points, mine align to Damon's at some points, yours and Damon, like it, it's, it's not fair to say, well, you know, it, very rarely will you find something where like everybody is a hundred percent on board with it. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So yeah, you know, I'm not. Like, you know, I, I, this is like you said that, um, I'm, I'm happy Damon had a good time and it was more positive than, than, than we thought. Cause you know, you know, Damon's critical, but in a good way. And, um, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I, I agree with some of his points about, you know, some of Disney's choices lately, which, like I said, I think it's, it comes down to, you know, they're just filling in where they can use stuff from multiple parks. And then I, I think it's going to be a little bit before we see like the next thing, whatever yeah, that is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I get that. I mean, you know, but like they've been looking for 
the ability to use these trackless ride systems, right? Like, cause yeah. they've had them in these other parks for so long. And I mean, listen, it's, it's, they're not the first trackless ride systems, right? They're the first of the newest versions of them because, you know, they had, I mean, the, uh, universe of energy was a trackless ride system. It was just like the first version of it, you know? Like, yes. And then tower of terror was like the next mm-hmm. version of it. And then, you know, and, and those both had their limitations, right? This one, I mean, they can pretty much do anything they want with the with this system, and where they can take these cars anywhere they want. But I, and I, it really does represent, you know, the latest and greatest in a lot of ways as far as technology goes. But you know, it's I I understand the idea of like it's funny to me that the, we're saying like oh it's being used too much when it's like the first time it's been used in the states for Disney is these couple rides, right? I don't it, know. Yeah, it's well, it's. It's the same, like, it's a fine line, I guess, is the way I see it. The there's, um, because Universal kind of got called out for doing uh simulator rides, yes, yeah, screen, uh, screen, ago, right? a lot of where, like all screen based rides, yeah, exactly, right? Where it was like it was too much of it, sure. And 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 the thing was, is at the start, you know, everyone was hyped about, you know, oh, it's very cool, you know, this is a different experience, but then after like the the fourth or the fifth one, it was like, okay, come on, They're like, this that. is not, yeah. yeah, this is not anything, right? So so yeah, it's you know we yeah we've got three of them now that that have come out and the the only thing is is you know Disney's not going to do that though like I like I think they know it's like okay you know yeah we've done trackless ride systems you know we got to shake it up and do something a little bit different but uh, yeah it's it's a fine line right like it's it's yeah, very hard yeah. to uh, it's very hard to to not not go down that that hole of you know well hey that you know you know cost cost on doing this is easy now because we have it and you know we know how to use it and and like you said you know they they can do infinite variations of it absolutely but yeah. but it gets to a point where you know people aren't interested in it anymore so, i guess i i yeah. just i mean i i was i love the trackless ride systems i think they're extraordinarily cool i mean i also you know it, Trevor, just when we were standing oh. there at Ratatouille, when all those rats just kind of like turned all at the same time and mm-hmm. all just kind of moved, you know, parallel into the spots, like it's almost like a dance to watch. Like it's it's very cool uh, to me. I I love the technology behind right. it. I love the the idea of it, and I think they like the freedom of being able to, like you said, and and also I think it creates rewritability because it is the same ride, but you are taking a different ride path each time. Now, given on rides like mickey minis and ratatouille like you're still ending up in the same places right uh rise of resistance is a little different because it does take you to different places on the actual ride now the ride experience is mostly still the same but there are different things that happen depending on which ride path you it's take, right it, it's kind of like i mean star tours does it but just with screens right yeah like, sure or, sure or, you know it all it all the, the ride um the ride ends the same way, but the variations are different. Yeah. And, well, yeah, I get yeah. it. And, and, and I know what you mean. Like I, I noticed it too. When, when we were standing in line for Ratatouille is I, I, I very much noticed. Yeah. When, when the cars pulled up and, and they would, like you said, they kind of danced around each other and same yeah. thing when they pulled away as you saw, like, yeah, there's there, like it, would a dance. Like a, yeah. it would be a group of three cars and they would all kind of move around each other in, in a certain way. And I was like, yeah, that, you know, that is, I, I absolutely agree with you there i think i'm like that is very cool yeah and i just don't want to see disney overuse it to a point where i don't think it's very where you don't think it's cool i get it (laughs) yeah yeah no i get it but i I also think this is just the confluence of like (sighs) these are the things that made sense right so what i mean by that is right like they they had the space that they had to put mickey and minis into where it was right like it's not like they can make a bigger building there right like so they have this confined space and they say to themselves, okay, well, what ride system can we use in this confined space that's going to make sense and is going to help us tell the story? Oh, trackless mm-hmm. ride system. Makes sense, right? Like, and Ratatouille was an import, right? So that was like, they just brought that over. And then Rise of the Resistance, again, it's based on the story and what they're trying to do. I don't, I don't know what other ride system they would have used in there. Like, there's, and you'll, again, you'll see when you write it, but like, I have no idea what other ride system they would be able to use that would make sense. Like, cause it's not going to be a roller coaster. It's not going to be, you know, like a, a, an Omni mover ride. Like, cause an Omni mover wouldn't work there either. Like it just makes yeah. the most sense for it's, it to be a trackless ride vehicle. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, you're right. Star, the whole galaxy's edge is there. There is still a finite amount of space that they yeah, have. Sure, exactly. And they, they can't do, 
not everything can be a massive um but that the rise of resistance for, is massive though like that's well, the thing it's gigantic like it's absurdly large you know i i well i i feel that there is some like th- there is some effects that they use as well like i've i've seen bits and pieces cuz like you know they have that tech now where they they make yeah. it look like you know you're in space when you're not really in space sure, right yeah, like yeah, yeah. visual like it's not i don't know what exactly they're doing but it, you know it's like screens and stuff but it creates that illusion um i i get the feeling that you know like like space mountain or anything else like, like it it's the same thing as space mountain space mountain is not like it's it's a big building but when you're actually like when you're inside it and you actually look at it with the lights on it's yeah. things are very compact oh yeah right? it's very yeah and, very squished in there and, and i think it would be the same thing with rises if you actually saw behind the scenes you would be like oh i i thought that was a lot bigger oh sure than it actually is because disney is very good at, at skewing um sight lines and perception and all that kind all of that, stuff yeah. to yeah, to make it work right and like it like i said i think it's you know it doesn't matter how much space they actually use of that because you you know again they could have like a massive like I'm I'm talking like you know hey they they could have uh, you know you know let this take over like you know two thirds of sure. of Hollywood studios but if it's if what they're doing though is not um or I don't know what the best way to put this if if the, if if it's just if it's just you know another variation of something they've already done. Yeah. It becomes hard to say, you know, while it's, you know, it's bigger or it's better or whatever. It's like, it, like th- this goes back to Damon's point. It's like, yeah, but you know, what are you really doing here? Right. Sure. Like it, it doesn't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, yeah. I just don't know how anybody can go on that. Like I, I, I've been on that ride now with a couple people that know nothing about star Wars and don't really care about rides. And then I've come off of it. Like, wow, that was crazy and like i've never been on anything like that before you know they came in with no expectations and they were shocked by it and and amazed by it you know and like the first time we went on it even though i'd watched a bunch of stuff i felt that same way so like i don't know i just i personally just don't get like how you can pick that ride apart and not like it i don't know it just doesn't make sense to me but (laughs) it's i mean because but listen you're you're operating on a different level than damon i guess so but but damon also like whenever <laughs> when damon says something is good i take that as it's it's like yes. you know at least a, above a seven out of ten right like damon's scale of good to bad is you know like good means he enjoyed it and he, he didn't think it was bad right yeah so. that, that, that's exactly the point point. and i was yeah. actually going to highlight that is that you know when you, when you say you brought on somebody that's never yeah. seen or, or does this stuff um though somebody from that point of view is actually the easiest person to impress because they have no preconceived notions. They have no expectations, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's good to, to be surprised like that. But yeah, like, like you said, you, you know, someone like Damon who has been to a lot of different places, has seen a lot of different things, you know, his, his bar is a lot higher. It's always going to be a lot higher. I expect it to be higher. Um, but yeah, like, you know, you'll never get a 10 out of 10 from him because, he he can see the nuances of where there's improvement and stuff and and i think that gets lost you know people look sure. at you know you know critiquing you know well the you know this ride you know could have been better because of x or whatever doesn't mean that the ride was bad it just you know people are just allowed to make their own observations yeah right? and i i like i understand though like so I, I understand the temptation to use screens, right? Like because screens are easy, right? <laughs> like like screens well, and you are can easy, update right? them easier, right? Yeah, you, you can, can upgrade change, them. Can, yeah, yeah. But and and honestly, on Rise of the Resistance, if you when you ride it, you know there's there's a mix. There's there's animatronics and there's and there's screens. Mm-hmm. And and when I you know going on it, I'm like, okay, well the places where they have screens kind of make sense, and the places where they have animatronics make sense to me too, right? Like because you can't really have a ride with all animatronics. It's a, it's a bad idea because those things break oh, don't, all the don't, time. Don't say that. No, because it's true though. Operationally, it's a terrible no, you, idea. You, but right? You're going to cause like, people are going to like meme about like the, the pirates are going to come for you from pirates of the Caribbean, man. Like, yeah, but those, don't say the, that. those are extraordinarily <laughs> simple pirates, right? Like, so that's, that's the oh, thing. Right? You're, like, you're making it worse. Tom. <laughs> the early, the early animatronics do like two motions, right? Like, if you look at like the the shaman at like the end of uh, Navi River Journey, right? Like that thing is absurdly complex and can break and breaks all the time, right? 
So I'm I know, saying, but you're like, but you're you're offending people that like you're you're offending those simple pirates. They didn't do anything to you, Tom. <laughs> uh, them and their simple movements. Well, good thing that they can only move their hand, uh, you know, one way. Yeah, <laughs> and do they can only hit else. you from the left side. <laughs> yeah, they, they literally can't do anything but move their arm that one way. Yeah, no, listen, I'm just saying, like, yeah. as much as we all want a ride where all everything is animatronics, like. Those those things break all the time. They just break. It's not They're, it's not overly feasible to no, do that. It's yeah. not. And it's it's not operationally a smart thing to do because it's just it, the stuff's going to break. Now that being said, like from what I've seen and from what I've heard people say that Guardians, you know, is missing the the animatronic animatronic factor. Now, part of that is I read they weren't really sure what the future movies were going to be like and when they were designing the ride, they were basing it on they you know didn't really know what characters were going to be alive and dead by the time they opened it you know opened the ride <laughs> and so apparently they yeah. were just kind of decided not to do anything and you know okay but i would would it be nice mm. that they threw some animatronics in there yeah absolutely that would be great I, and i'm you know, honestly surprised that they didn't steal rocket out of out the of, gardens yeah. ride in california i'm kind of surprised too but i think with the way the story works i think it kind of makes sense that the, they're not there with you but i don't know okay. who knows yeah. so you know it's it's an interesting conversation but i also do think though trevor like i feel just from reading like comments and reading people's posts that there is a certain amount of okay you did that really innovative thing and that was amazing now what's next and like they it's like disney has to keep topping themselves and if they don't mm-hmm. people get disappointed right and there's a certain uh, you, there's only so much topping you can do right and and not not every ride that comes out is going to be the greatest most innovative ride they've ever come up with right it's, it's was, just yeah that's that was my point earlier you're saying you know, like it's filler yeah. and but filler sounds bad right but that's not it, like yeah you're right that, it's yeah, yeah it's not filler and that's yeah. why i said it's like in between it's you know they they have there has to be a lull in between one-upping themselves absolutely Right, like well, yeah, yeah, and listen, listen. I mean, Hollywood Studios needed a a, a family ride, another family ride, because there's some thrill rides at fa- at Hollywood Studios, right? Because even like looking at it for my daughter, I'm just like, wow, there's not a lot my daughter can do at Hollywood Studios or or will mm-hmm. want to do, you know. And, and so yeah. something like Mickey and Minnie's was a need, right? That was a need there, and I mean the same thing with Ratatouille at Epcot. Again, a lot of people will say that you know Epcot is not a super kid friendly park, right? Because there's just not a lot of kid rides there, and so for me adding Remy in like, that's great. That's what the kind of ride I was looking for, for my daughter. Right. Like that's the kind of thing I want. So Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I get it. Everyone's at different points. Like some people want them to, you know, build the, a super thrilling roller coaster, like Velocicoaster. Right. Great. But that's not what Disney does. That's not what they're trying to do. That's not their target audience. Like, and I just, I just think there's a certain amount of, Disney's in a tough place with with certain expectations from certain people, you know, where it's if they if there's a need to keep topping themselves and otherwise they're disappointed. Right. So, like, there's nothing they're going to do at this point that's going to be like, oh, that's that's amazing. I need to go for that. Right. Like, even with Tron, people are already just like, oh, well, it already exists. Like, there's nothing new. You know, <laughs> like, it's. Just, uh, yeah. But you know? but that's the thing is, you know, you don't you don't have to please everybody. And I know. But, you, you know, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, you, you know, it's not it's like Disney. I, I Everyone wants to think that Disney is trying to win. And when yeah, I yeah, and, yeah. and I use win in such a like an ambiguous term, because it's like, oh, you know, th- Sorry, to me, I I grew up living through, and again, I'm sure someone's going to meme about this, but I don't care. Oh, God. I grew up living through the console wars, okay. which, yeah. You're, yeah. you know, in video games, it was, you know, it was Nintendo versus Sega. It was PlayStation versus Xbox. It, it was always, you were always in one camp and like everyone was always trying to, well, you know, this side is better. You know, they're going to release, you know, this game is going to, you know, you know, kill everything else. Right. And Every, people do the same thing with with Disney and Universal and, and and anything else that competes with it, right? You know, there there's there's a sense that well, you know, Disney's going to re- release that killer ride, and that's going to be yeah. the end of it. No, no, that's not how like, it, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, no, no, just just stop thinking like that. Stop and thinking that way, yeah. And, and and so you know you know waiting for innovation and looking for something new and interesting is fine, but you know. I'm I'm purely of the idea that 
you know, hey, wh- whatever whatever they want to do, like like Disney is making its own course. They have done that for yeah. years. They they've they the reason that they have done so well is because they didn't listen to people saying, you know, do do the next thing, do better, do like it's yeah, it's not what they do. So, well, and yeah. listen, if they, if people don't like the things that they're building, then they'll change course. You know, that's what yeah. they do. That's, you know, they'll, they'll do yeah, something different. Like it's, they have you know, learned that lesson before. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, it's listen. And I, I, you know, we can always talk about, okay, well, you know, guardians was like that. They, they don't have any animatronics. They probably did that, you know, for budget cuts. They might've, they probably did, but like, there's always those things, right? Like Imagineers come up with like, here's the coolest thing that we could possibly do. And then, then that gets, you know, pushed back based on the, based on the costs. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. and I mean, although this roller coaster, I still, I think I read it costs like, uh, like $500 million or something crazy like that. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to look, but I, yeah. it was reportedly a lot of, it was several hundred million dollars. Um, so, Oh yeah, no, I it's realized five hundred million dollars. Yeah, five hundred million dollars it cost. So yeah, sure, it was a budget cut, but it still cost five hundred million dollars. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like think um, about that. Sorry, not to completely derail this because we've been having a really good conversation about this, but we totally so. went off oh, script yeah, we completely, on, on the we, rundown. Yeah, we blew th- and okay. so I think I think we should, um, like, in the interest of time here, because we have been. Well, doing this for a while. There's not a lot of um, stuff here. There's not a lot yeah, of meat so, here. So, you can do this so whole, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's skip over the earnings call highlights. I don't think there's really much to talk about there. Like Damon said, you know, yeah, Disney makes money next. Um, <laughs> hey, let's, well, let's talk though, about Halloween. Okay. But, um, but, yeah. But quickly though, I just, the one thing I thought it was interesting is they were saying basically if demand goes down, that they'll just open up the reservation system more. And also that they're basically back at 2019 levels of crowds and that the mm-hmm. uh, that, um, hotels are at 90% capacity. So listen, I mean, it's, they're back. They're pretty much back to where they were at this point. That's, that's, yeah. the, that's what I, that's what I thought was interesting. And the number one thing for me, Trevor, that I thought was interesting in all this is that they're expanding their uh, capital expenditures to $5 billion compared to 3.6 billion capex expenditures almost always go to the parks and almost all go to the parks so to me that tells me we're going to see some big announcements at d23 that they are are uh, investing in the parks five billion dollars they're increasing it and uh that's going to be they have some big investments coming up so i i that's that was the big thing for me because i had low expectations for d23 i think i thought disney was maybe going to cruise a little bit but if they're spending five billion on the parks and not all of it will go to the parks, but most of it will, because um, mm. they they will use it for other stuff. But um, th- that at that level of spending, they're going to be announcing some major stuff. So, or and that to me that also translates to things coming back that people saying, you know, well, I wish that you know, like um, dining plan and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And you know, you know, some some of the smaller things that we've talked about, like you know, you know. Um, sending stuff back to your, your room and yeah, things yeah. like that. Like that all leans into that as well as you, you know, yeah, there's new stuff, but also, like you said, more, more of the returning to normal because they have the money to spend to do so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Disney's also co- out here saying, well, like, you know, a lot of people are saying that we're busy because of pent up demand. We're saying that we're not busy because of pent up demand. We're just getting back to where we were, you know, like that's basically what, what they're saying. So, yeah. All right. So anyway, we can go right. back to Halloween. Okay, that's all I wanted yeah, to mention. Halloween the because, because, you know, it's it's the middle of August and I so immediately Halloween. think of Halloween yep. at this time. Uh, <laughs> had the first Halloween party on Friday, yeah. uh, just this past Friday. So, yeah. yeah, And and the, yeah, the, the big showstopper there, and, and I've seen this a couple of times on Facebook, is uh, uh, Max Goof dressed as Powerline. So, so Goofy's son, Max, um, having a Powerline costume at the not so scary Halloween party, which it's pretty cool that, you know, they, they, you know, I, I think a lot of people who have watched the goofy movie, you, you know, that's, that's kind of all stuck in our memories. And it's nice that, that Disney acknowledges that and does uh throwbacks for the Halloween party. Oh, it's definitely a nostalgia <laughs> play for like the, yeah. yeah oh, a hundred percent. Like, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. So, cause it is, he's also alongside, it says he's alongside his nineties crew. 
So like they're just yeah, like, yeah. Hey, the, all you people that grew up in the nineties, <laughs> this the, is for you. <laughs> yeah the the, uh, the the dancers with him actually it, it reminds me of um, in Paradise Pier for anyone who who had who'd been to paradise pier for, for surfs up with Mickey, which was the, the character dining there. Um, that even like I took my son there in like 2014 and it still felt like the nineties. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, and like the, like the, the, the costume design, everything for the dancers with Max. I was like, that reminds me of like, yeah, like going to that, that uh, character breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. All right. So, what else we got here? Um, All right. Um, Epcot's single rider line, uh, like Damon said, he saw that um, yeah, that it's it, it's coming. I I I know he made the comment about it seeming like it would be slower. I don't agree with that because there is there's lots of time between shows for them to, to get know, everybody in line. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I think it's just a matter of yeah, you know, it means that there's less spaces or, or you know sure. less empty spaces on the ride which yeah it's not again, a bad it, thing it, efficiency yeah, it, is good <laughs> and, and it, it it actually you know people don't people always see well you know single rider lines just you know a way for you know people to cut in front or whatever y- yes it, like for individual people yes but overall it actually drives down the wait, wait times for yeah, rides absolutely because because you don't have as many like those people riding in single rider are not taking up space in the regular line. Yeah, right? and like that's hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly why they do single rider. I don't know why there's not more single riders at Disney. Like the, it feels well, like there's so few. Again, you, <laughs> Disneyland there is lots. It, for some reason, Disney World didn't do a lot of single riders, and that yeah, that puzzles odd. me as well. Yeah, yeah. it's so odd because like it's just, it seems there's plenty of rides that you can be on where there's just, uh, you know, missing a spot, you know, or like you're missing a couple mm-hmm. spots and it's like, you know, if you, Disney wants to cram as many people on there as they possibly can to keep the wait times as low as possible. You know, that's, I don't know. It's just it, interesting. It, it's a matter of, I, I think the, the weird thing is, is that they, they thought about fast pass and they thought about standby. Yeah. But single rider is a third line. So, so it's not just that's another like, line. Yeah, that's true. Logistically. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so in terms of like how to get you know people to the ride, they didn't think about that. That they, they were like, oh, you know, every ride's going to have fast pass. It's like, yeah, but you actually needed, you needed a single rider line as well for a lot yeah. of these rides. Yeah, not for because, all of them, right? Like, it doesn't make sense for every ride, right? Yeah. So, but for some, it does. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I know what you're saying though. It makes sense. But operationally, it makes sense to me. It's just interesting that they all of a sudden decide to bring this back after 15 years. Mm-hmm. Of being gone, like because they had this before, which I didn't remember them <laughs> earlier having it, but now I, I, you know, I guess they did. So yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it feels like a, you know, I feel like somebody higher up was like walking through the room, or not through the room, but through like the land, and was like, "Hey, what's that over there? Oh, that's the single rider line. Oh, why are we not using that? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like it, it feels, yeah, but." Yeah, or they I, were looking at like the operation because I'm sure they have daily reports of how many people they ran through every ride and and they yeah, probably and, yeah and it could be that for a long time it just was never at a point where yeah, they needed it, it justified single rider well especially since they added that new theater right like you yeah. know nowadays I I can't remember the the past couple times I've gone Soren has not been over a half hour wait like at any yeah. time which you know was great and it shouldn't really be because they're huge theaters I mean they accommodate a lot of people on that ride at once. Um, unless something's broken or you know whatever, but um, but yeah, I, I it's interesting that they brought this back. So, all right. So then we have two. Just to wrap this up, we have two mm-hmm. rumors, um, and these both come from WWNT. So you know, keep them with a grain of salt. Grain of salt, always. Yep. Um, and I, I actually the reason I put these the first one on here is because I actually think they're right about this. So a phantasmic return date for Disney Hollywood studios may be announced at D 23. I actually do think that they're going to announce the return that's, date at D 23. Yeah. That's but, low hanging fruit. I yeah, mean, that's yeah. easy, right? Yeah. Like I, yeah. I could have just guessed that I don't need like a source for that. Like it's, they're obviously holding back all announcements until D 23. Um, mm-hmm. And I know this because, you know, I'm, I write the, this, this outline and, and you can just see the, the fluff they're putting out on the parks blog over the past couple of weeks here. Um, as opposed to any actual announcements for anything. So I think at this point, they probably are not going to announce anything major until D23. And and then they, they'll announce a lot of things. But the, the thing interesting that I found interesting in this article 
is they did mention that the uh, they have been doing testing and um, they are casting currently. So, um, you know, so the testing's underway. So if that if they're already testing everything, I mean, we're probably a month or two yeah, away. There's, yeah, yeah. There, the there's a there's a minimum point they want to be at, and then yeah, yeah. It, it'll they'll like you said, it's it's usually pretty quick because they once they get everything to that point, then it's like yeah. okay, green light. Ready to go. go. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm still feeling hopeful that it will be open for my trip in October. I would, I would love to see it. It's been a couple <laughs> of years. So, um, the other interesting one though, and, and we've talked about this before and I, I still don't believe this is going to happen. This, I, this is such wishful thinking. It really is. So, yeah. um, the other thing they're bringing up is talking about a wreck it Ralph attraction, uh, being in the space that was formerly occupied by Stitch's great escape. Um, and you know, they, they, filed permits for this back in 2020 obviously things kind of ground to a halt uh because of covid uh and you know the merchants of venus shop has been closed too so and and you know been g- gone for a while i mean listen i think we all want something in this space i first of all just don't know how wreck it ralph in any way fits into tomorrowland that's number one and i'm not like a purist about this stuff like you know i don't really care like because i don't think buzz yeah, lightyear I mean, or monster yeah, buzz lightyear's in there yeah and so neither does monster whatever. Inc. Yeah. none of them really fit into tomorrow lands at all but yeah i don't know wreck it ralph feels even more egregious to me I, I mean at least like there's a space theme with uh you know with uh, buzz lightyear I, I feel less bad about buzz lightyear than i do about monster Inc. uh monster Inc. feels more egregious and so does uh you know this this wreck it ralph thing but like they also mentioned too that they were going to reuse the theaters in the round I mean, I'm pretty positive I saw that they removed everything out of those like a year or two ago. I, I remember seeing an article about that they dismantled everything within those rooms. So I guess maybe they're just using the same room. I, I don't know. Yeah, well, like, like, I, yeah, I don't see why they would reuse the the seats the and everything. Like, yeah, yeah, it would, it would be, it would be a full gut and replace at this point anyway. And and yeah, the, the whole thing, like you said, you know, you know, we got Monsters Inc. and so so in terms of you know IPs that are appropriate for Tomorrowland like that that's really not worthy of a discussion at this point because yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's out the window. Yeah. yeah. Um theme but, for Tomorrowland's out the window at this point. It's just yeah, you know, yeah, whatever the thing is I, I I know everyone looks at Wreck-It Ralph because oh, you know, computer games, but as I was thinking about here I realized that that um Wreck-It Ralph is nothing futuristic. It's actually current day. Yeah, well, because that's kind of. Well, it feels like it belongs more in Epcot to me than it. I, like I could see it in Epcot, right? Like because Epcot yeah. had those early computers and touch screens, and they were about technology and like you know, I don't know. Go ahead, continue. Sorry. Yeah. So so because the thing is, is that you know, Wreck It Ralph as a whole is you know it talks about you know an '80s game and then updates to you know current gen and um and then you know you know they talk about or you know the second one's all about the internet, which again th- these are all not futuristic concepts their current day concepts so yeah, yeah exactly you know you know being fixated on well it's going to be a wreck it ralph ride like no that i think people are just filling it in their mind that they want a wreck it ralph attraction and they can't think of anywhere else to put it but like to your point there's supposed to be that whole play pavilion yeah in in epcot like that's that is far more suited to wreck it ralph and than, suited to Epcot. Than this. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like every everything about it screams more Epcot to me than it does Tomorrowland. Yep. Um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they'll finally pull the trigger and say, Yeah, you know, we're doing something with that space. Um, I like I said, I I'm not a hundred percent believing that, you know, it's gonna be Wreck It Ralph. I think there could be something else that we're not even thinking of. Like, I mean, I don't know. It's I, I'm not gonna lie, I also kind of yeah. hate this idea too. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really not the best use of the space, in my opinion. Well, yeah, because so so essentially what it was going to be is they'd use the you'd sit in a seat there and apparently there'd be some sort of video game controller at every seat. And then you would somehow mm-hmm. be able to play an interactive role in the show. OK, so first of all, Wreck-It Ralph, unless I'm playing Sugar Rush, I don't care about anything else I would do in Wreck-It Ralph. It, right. Like, unless it's like Hero's Duty, which. Yeah. yeah. OK, maybe. Yeah. I want to play Sugar Rush. <laughs> like, right. That's what I want to do, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> so that, like, I, I want to be King Candy. I want to race around the track. I mean, Sugar Rush is just a Mario Kart ripoff, right? Like, that's what they were trying to do, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's essentially what it is. But, um, which is fine, right? Like, that's that's kind of what they're, they're they were trying to do at the time. But if, for me, I'm just like, 
I don't know if I'm even going to want this. But at the same time, it's like, okay, am I going to say no to another attraction, even if it's not the greatest attraction? Because we would still go on Stitch's Great Escape. Like, it was fine. It wasn't the best ride, but I mean, it was there. And, you know, we didn't hate it. Yeah. So, I mean, if it's like a mediocre ride, okay, at least they're using the space and they're there's another attraction to go on, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't love this idea. I don't know what else they would do with the space. I really don't, but I don't know. Bring it back yeah, to, I get, bring it back to flight into the flight to the moon or the, or mission to Mars and do like a, an updated an version updated, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do that. Like, I don't yeah, need actually, that. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean that, that, you know, you know, space travel has been more of a conversation again. Lately. That's what I'm saying. And, yeah. You know, you know, that, that's something Disney could, could get on board with. It's not IP related or they could invent a new IP around it, you know, cause they, yeah. they can do that. that. I also just feel like yeah. magic kingdom is at a point now where it's like, if it's not an IP, it's not going to happen. Right. Like you can do like nameless, you know, IP less stuff. I feel like elsewhere in I mean, it, it, Hollywood studios and magic kingdom are all just IP, right? Like that's just all IP like animal kingdom. You can get away with doing non IP stuff if you but, want. Right. But it's, and then like here, Epcot, I think you can too, but I mean, they're not doing it anymore anyway. So here's the question for you though, yeah. because th- th- this is, this is a bit of a chicken and an egg thing, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do, does the IP have to start outside of the parks? No, because it, like, we had this argument, right? Where I said, well, yeah. you know, Jungle Cruise is now IP, right? And that started but, in the parks. That was yeah. original, but now it's IP, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying is, you know, they, they could invent something new and, and you know, start it in the parks and then, you know, build, you know, it, it could be an in tandem thing, especially now, like with Disney Plus and everything. Like, it's very easy for them now where they could, you know, there could be a whole show being developed around something and it's like, you know, they're building the ride at the same time or they're building, you know, a showroom in the park. And then it's like, Oh, this thing came out. And then, you know, right afterwards there's a series on Disney plus or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. it's, yeah, I don't know. It'll be but yeah, just, but just I shoving just... wreck it Ralph in for the sake of wreck it Ralph just doesn't feel. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't believe it's going to happen. I just, I'm, and, I don't know. I just don't believe yeah, it. Now, and the, like, prove me and, wrong. And all, wrong. You know, all, all this said, like I, I am, I am a, big fan of wreck it ralph like it's it's one of my favorite disney movies for sure Sure. um because you know being a big gamer as well it totally lines up with my interest but like like you said yeah i I don't want to see it used in the park just because put it in the play pavilion put it in the play yeah that's it yeah like just put it there yeah like it just doesn't make sense where you're trying to put it like there's so many other things you could do there that kind of fit in with tomorrowland like do that like yeah so i mean listen i uh, as we we've talked about d23 a bunch and and we're excited for it and we'll we'll see what happens but i i do think there are going to be some big announcements especially with them announcing that they are upping their investments um and 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 look to spend more money over the past uh, the next couple of years here um you know i think it's a good sign and i think i'm excited to see what actually comes of it all so um i uh, you know, I, I don't even know if i should say this oh god i I'm going to propose something dangerous, Tom. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do a live stream with D23? No, no. no I, thinking about what, that. Okay. Here's, here's what I think. So, so we've been talking about what we think they're going to announce at D23. And I feel we could make a, a small side bet. Ooh, okay. On what, like, so, so like, I, I think we should pick something and, you know, you know, something like this, you, you know, like the record Ralph thing, like we both agree with, but something that, you know, maybe we disagree on and, and I feel we should make a bet on it. And I feel that like the loser should have to like drink a full cup of Beverly from club cool oh, on their trip. <laughs> and, that's, that's and, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and, and that's why I kind of regret saying this now, but I like, maybe we, I think we need to talk about this in the chat and flesh something out, but I'm just throwing this out there. And so now the listeners can hear, and I'm sure that they're going to put in their two cents on this and I'm regretting it now, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so, so that, that's my proposal is, you know, let's find something and let's, let's have, you know, nothing big like, or, or no, maybe again. And I think, you know, it just, because we both have trips coming. So like yours is in October, mine's in November and we make a bet on something at D23, you, you know, something that either does get announced or doesn't get announced or whatever. And whoever is wrong 
because you know you know winning winning's too easy yeah, uh, yeah like sure, I, sure. I don't want to be like winning something is like yay yeah, you know you know that that's easy the whoever's wrong has to drink a cup of beverly okay all right that's, that's all right that's fair we can, we can okay that. <laughs> i'm scared but yeah 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 me too i i i the more i'm thinking about this my my yeah, it's this terrible idea why you, why you i thought you my, wanted to do like a live stream or something i was like i'll no, do a live my, stream <laughs> you'd rather do a live stream than drink beverly <laughs> i would i want to do a live stream anyway like i mean i know we okay, probably can't yeah. broadcast it we could just like comment on it but like I mean, I think it would be kind of cool to do a live stream of it. Uh, it'd be interesting to react to things mm-hmm. in the moment, you know. So I don't know, but yeah, let's we we got a bit of time to try and figure that out. Let's, yeah, we got uh, weeks. But, but like I said, even if we can't do a live stream, I think we should uh, we should figure out a bet or something of that sort. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Let's let's wrap this up. We're like two hours. Yeah, like geez. Yeah, we are. Yeah, <laughs> it's the longest okay. podcast in a while. This is uh, yeah. We the past couple have been kind of kind of you know less uh, than normal. But Damon talked for like an hour and twenty minutes. So yeah. Um. Okay. So to wrap things up, um, we'll start with the email address. You can always uh, reach us at uh, welcomehomepodcast at gmail dot com. We love hearing from you guys. Uh. You know. You know, send us your questions that way. Send us uh, trip reports, um, a- any kind of stuff like that. You know, I've had I've had a lot of great listeners reach out. You know, um, you know, asking about um, you know they're planning their own trips and they're not sure about things or that you know they want to get a perspective on stuff. You know, feel free to reach out to us. We we love hearing from you guys. Uh, if you want to check us out on different social platforms, as usual, we are on Facebook as Welcome Home Podcast, and there is the. Uh, um, Facebook group, Welcome Home Disney Waitlist. Uh, if you're not in the group, um, please consider joining because um, it's a fun group. I I really enjoy seeing all the the stuff that comes out of there. That you know, all the stuff that people share, and you know, just it, it's such a great community. It makes me happy that we have such a great community around this podcast because you know it's a good thing. And that like this this podcast came from a good place, and I think the uh, the dis or the um, the Facebook group is a representation of that. So keep it going sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, some, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's overall a positive thing. It like some of yeah. you uh, <laughs> <laughs> stop doing that. <laughs> I thought about quitting it's, the group the other day. It's not fine. I thought about quitting the group the other day. I really, I was, wait, what group? What our group? Oh, why? <laughs> because I, I, I'm tired of getting, you know, getting all sorts of flack for nonsense. <laughs> that's what makes the group so much fun though yeah for you guys it's not fun for me <laughs> anyway back to our regularly scheduled um whatever this is um yeah if you, so yeah if you guys want to follow us on youtube and instagram uh youtube as welcome home podcast and instagram as welcome home picks uh whenever we're in the parks you'll get updates to those platforms me. Sorry, except, except me. I, I use I except, use except Damon. Yes, yeah. I, like, I, mean, I, I, like the, I did update. I, yeah, you just did it in like the same comment thread though. Like you didn't even do new posts for each thing. You just like, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, but, but either way, you know, consider subscribing to those platforms. And also, if you, if you want to support the podcast, uh, go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and check out our merchandise. Uh, you know, there's there's water bottles there, there's shirts and and fanny packs. You know, <laughs> the important stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, do, so, do, do you have to get searched in the line of backpacks with fanny packs? Uh, um, only if the, uh, only if the, only thing, if goes the off. Yeah. thing goes off. So depends on what uh, you're carrying in your fanny pack. Yeah. Damon, Damon, was it, didn't you enjoy the new security procedures where you don't just like walk through, you just don't even stop. No. What are you talking about? There's they, you don't have to get every bag searched anymore. If you have a bag. Absolutely. Through, that is not true. What are you talking about? Yes, it is. Not every bag no, gets not. searched. Every uh, single bag got searched. Well, if you have a chart, if you have a battery in it, it will get char- it will get searched. But if it's dude, we, every bag got searched before we even got through the metal detectors. What? Since what? That's, yeah, I, I, that, <clears> I don't know what to tell you, is, but, but yeah. dude, every bag was searched. Yeah, no, that's and, not and what we, they've been doing, and it was yeah. long too. No, like my wife was there for a long time every mm. time. No, that's not what they have been doing because they those new scanners pick up stuff. I in don't the know bag. what to tell you, man. Yeah, I don't know. And it was slow. Yeah. Anyway, so so get a fanny pack so you don't get searched like Damon did. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get searched. I just carry nothing with me. Okay. A, a wallet. That's it. Well, then I'm disappointing you, Damon, for not having a fanny pack. There you go. Um, I mean, I would like one, but only if I didn't have to go through that line. 
because that line was tough, man. <laughs> We're never going to end the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, check out the store, please. Also, if uh, you would rather uh, support us through Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash welcome home pod and check out the different levels of support we have there. Uh, all of those come with exclusive merch that you can only get from Patreon, and it gets you access to our Discord server, which is uh, yet another place that we uh, love to talk with our listeners. Last but not least, if you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, leave us a five-star review. Uh, it helps more people find the podcast, and it makes us happy. And, uh, you know, if you leave a review on iTunes, we'd love to see that as well. Is there any uh, this week, Tom, that uh, stand out to you? You know, you know, we haven't we didn't get any new ones uh, this week outside of, you know, the, the one I read last week. So so no new ones this week. So please review the show so we can re- read more on here. Uh, but yeah, I'd sorry. I've got none, but I do have a, a preview of next week's episode. I can give you really quickly. So we, oh. we are, yeah, we are, we're going to have uh Derek and Marissa from, uh, from world of DVC back on the show for the first time in a long time. So I'm, I'm pretty yeah, excited to have them back. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I am excited to have them back. It's been a while and I, we do enjoy having them on the show. So I'm a little upset. I won't be here. Yeah. Good Damon's got to be out, uh, for what college stuff. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Sorry, Damon, but we'll we'll let them know that you miss them. Yeah. Well, I don't miss them that much because I don't have a hat. Like, how hard, <laughs> well, how hard I'll, would it I'll be let, to send a hat, man? Wait, did you meet I'll, Becky I'll or Derek, no? no? Did you meet no. Becky or no? No, she no. We we she was gone by the time I was. Like, it just the crossover didn't work. Uh, okay, well, yeah. So it, Be- Becky posted uh, her kid in a DV, in World of DVC hat on Facebook, right? Yeah, I don't understand how I don't have a hat. I just don't get that. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll try to get them to give you one. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. All right. Uh, so don't forget to subscri- subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any podcast app out there. Uh, just search for Welcome Home. Look for the one that says uh, Disney DVC. Just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company. And as such, all opinions we express on the show are our own. So please consult a Disney cast member or a DVC uh, cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. Big thank you to our sponsor of this episode, uh, DVC Rental Store. Please check them out if you want to rent out your points or if you want to rent somebody else's points and try out DVC for yourself. And, of course, World of DVC for being continued supporters of the show. Uh, Join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion. Of course, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle is not.